Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if god like Naruto Sasuke and civilian council bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Crossover Pring Glover and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Prolurge the Mysterious Rogue. Baited. Okay, it is time for another attempt at a story, my first Naruto fic. Recommendations are always wanted. There will be bashing of Sasuke and the pink banshee Sakura, as well as well, generally everyone in Konoha who isn't a ninja and are decent. Aka, well I keep Kiba, Kakashi and the Sandaim Hokage good and not bashed, the civilian council and the old birds Humura and Kaharu, expect also Danzo and the ever-changing Mrs. Hirono to also be ridiculed. The land of waves, Tazuna's house. In the dark of night, a loud sound was heard, possibly louder than the screams of the entire Haruno family. It was the snoring of one Yuzumaki Naruto. The whiskered blonde was fast asleep, recovering from an earlier scuffle with a most mysterious missing nin, while downstairs things were far from perfect. Shut the dope up, Echiha can't nor will sleep in these conditions. One arrogant prick by the name of Echiha Sasuke, a duck-haired black-haired kid with severe issues, complained to their sensei, a silver-haired masked ninja of the jonin rank, by the name of Hadak Kakashi. The masked man sighed, listening to the boy ran through his locked door, luckily for the noise level the pink-haired one was asleep as well. An, I know that the guy should be too tired to move around at this point, but this is my story, so he just recovered quicker than in the Anima manga. He hadn't really wanted to teach anyway. Kakashi saw himself as more of a lone operative, he worked the best alone. The few friends he had, had died in battle beside him, his sensei, who happened to be the so-called Dobe's father, not that anyone aside from a few knew that, Abito San Rinchan, did that leave Guy his best friend. Sometimes, the silver-haired man had to wonder if he had a curse that killed all those who were close to him. That was the point he argued with trying to get out of teaching in the first place. Flashback, Hokage's office, the day after the rookie nine graduated. Adik san, you must train Ichiha sama, he needs the jutsu in your arsenal, more than any other genin, and other Himura, an old man who for some reason was still considered an active ninja, and his sidekick, an evil granny who looked like the mother of some sort of evil toad virgin aunt, an, Harry Potter fans, may know another of this description, called Dolores Umbridge, named Kaharu. Actively demanded the masked nin, with fellow future mentors Yuhi Kurinai and Suratobi Asuma, along with ninja parents Hai Ugahiyashi, Inuzuka Tsum, Akamichi Chauza, Nara Shikaku and Aburam Shibi. The Sandame Hokage, an old, still tan skinned man by the name of Suratobi Hirazan, coughed to interrupt the current conversation. And by other, you mean Naruto kun, who despite being labeled a dead last, managed to defeat a chunin and master a jonin level technique, the Hokage took a blow of his pipe crossly. He cared a lot for the spunky little Jinchuriki and couldn't help but wonder if Naruto was able to learn a technique like that so quickly, yet fail his exams. He decided to ask to put someone on it, he and Aruka-kun from the academy always had a bad feeling some of the instructors may have sabotaged Naruto's lessons, in fact they had managed to catch a former janitor of the academy attempt to break Naruto's chair in the classroom, though the man admitted that others were with him in the anti-Naruto plan, courtesy of some persuasion via Anko and Ibiki. He managed to pull the civilian council to his side, and he had to have the janitor go before they could get names. That wasn't saying he couldn't fire him, though. Amurasama, I hear what you say, and while you have a point or two, I'm not going to train him. Bad luck follows me, the kind of luck that kills, that and I have more important things to do with my time. Besides, the boy's attitude was detesting, but he couldn't bring that up without the old bats, telling him that the boy was merely suffering from trauma. Yeah, no way in hell that was true, he was just a spoiled brat. So, other than the all-important Achiha, can we actually get something done, Hiashi sighed like organizing the new genin now, while Hiashi may appear to dislike Hinata, he does care, slightly. While he was no dad of the year, he did have an interest in who would be on his daughter's team, the team after all, had to push her to improve and protect her unmarked by Akigen to Jutsu Kekai Genkai. The Ashi San has a point, we already know one team, the new Inoshika Cho team, my team Asuma grinned while smoking his trademark cigarette. Well normally this would induce a complaint from Tsum for her sensitive nose, Shibi for its health issues to his bugs, and the old bats, they decided not to, in the hope that the smoke shortens the two advisors' lifespan. That leaves Inuzuka Kiba, Aburam Shino, Hayuga Hinata, Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasuke, and Yuzumaki Naruto. Do we really need to teach that boy anything Kaharu snap that boy is too dangerous, idiotic, irresponsible, immature. He's a teenager, that sort of comes with the territory Shikaku side it's troublesome, but we all were like that, heck even my boy acts like that, sometimes. And after all, we have to take on any genin who manages to pass the academy, and the test that follows Shibi stated in his monotone, causing the elders to pale. 
after all, they helped the civilian council pass that law, after all, to give the civilians more ninja from their way of life into the armed forces, thus increasing their overall influence. And as to his immaturity, perhaps being teamed with my son could possibly help him mature. Or, the thing inside him will kill off all your insects, with its to the hokage cough to cut off Amura. Shibi didn't flinch, he knew quite well his son was safe from the chakra that the Jinchuriki could possibly give off, for unlike the old badgers, he and the rest of the parents here met the boy once or twice and knew he was not a monster. Actually, I think that that setup might work, with my daughter, Hinata, on the team, as well he Ashi mentioned, surprising everyone. Huh? Chowza grunted. This is new and troublesome. What was in my water this morning? Tsum said to herself. Going off what Shibi sent said, if my daughter was placed on his team, perhaps some of his drive might pass to her. At the minimum, even the most basic of Byakugan could tell if his tenant's chakra was getting looser influencing him. The Ashi let off a rare grin, the council had a betting pool for who was able to best beat or mess with the idiots on the elder and civilian council each meeting, and it looks like the three free hot spring coupons were all his. Actually, we of the Elder Council had talked it over, and we decided that Inuzuka Kiba would provide the same sort of inspiration to your daughter, Hiyashi Sankaharu smiled evilly. Inside, Hiyashi was cursing, now he couldn't get those tickets without insulting Tsum, last time he did that, the Hyuga compound smelled like dog piss for a month. No one noticed that Kakashi was smirking. So, then it looks like Kurunai-chan has Inuzuka Kiba, Hayuga Hinata and Aburam Shino, so I guess that means that Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasuke and Yuzumaki Naruto are on my team, the Jonin smirked. The resulting scream of fury from the elders shook several window frames, and one masked Jonin got himself three hot spring coupons and was treated to a night of fine drinking with Tsum and the former Inoshika Cho, on their tab of course. Then flashback. The Kashi quickly came to a conclusion after that, teaching sucked. He was actually expected to be on time and had to deal with whining from all three of them. Though seeing Sasuke getting clawed by Tora was a good chuckle. Bakashi quickly decided that Naruto was his favorite among the three. While Sakura was virtually useless and Sasuke an arrogant prick who expected Kakashi to teach him all his jutsu and strutted around like royalty, Naruto was willing to learn and most importantly, he had humility, well more than the others anyway. Naruto didn't have anything handed to him like his teammates and knew how to respond to failure by getting back up and improving himself. Kakashi saw that with how his failure with the demon brothers led to his desire to better himself, which led to his shocking show of skill in fighting Momoichi's abusa. If the boy could use such skill with only two jutsu really at his disposal, with only a little help from Sasuke, the boy could be just as great as his own sensei, Namaki's Minato, the Yandame Hokage. Of course, the boy needed to pick up a few more jutsu first and improve on his tojutsu and chakra control and perhaps see if he could use jinjutsu. What did they teach him at the academy, anyway? The boy's tojutsu left too many weak spots and he could barely spell jinjutsu, let only do it. His chakra control was abysmal, Pakin could use a jutsu better than the boy, if the kaiubi wasn't in him, he'd be in a lot of trouble. As his lack of tojutsu nearly cost him. Flashback, wave country. The group, weary from their last battle with the swordsman's abusa, who was killed by the Kiri Hunter Nin boy, though Naruto was still adamant he though the Nin was female, and Tazuna seemed to agree with him about his or her gender, with their exhausted sensei being carried by the knucklehead and brooder, before Sakura yelped loudly to get the other's attention. Sasukun, Kakashi sensei, Baka. Standing before them was a new ninja. This ninja was wearing ragged brown robes that covered his face, with no visible height, in fact all they could tell was this ninja was male. Ah, so Zabuza Chan was defeated by a bunch of brats and a dead weight ninja, eh? No matter, it appears I have to kill the bridge builder now. We won't let you, Dadabeo. Naruto yelled before dropping Kakashi. Their sensei then flattened Sasuke before the Ichiha pushed the unconscious man off as Tazuna backed away slowly. Oh, how dare you drop such a weight on an elite? Naruto ignored him. Yeah, Baka. How dare you try to flatten Sasuke-kun? The ever-faithful pink-haired bitch added in. Naruto flinched in pain at that remark before turning back towards their strange enemy. Humph, what pathetic teamwork, this won't be worth a chakra beast wave palm. The mysterious ninja sliced his hand, which was coated in blue chakra, as a shockwave of wind energized chakra flew at the genin. Sasuke and Sakura jumped out of the way, the jutsu would have instead continued and struck Izuna and Kakashi, but Naruto, before jumping, did everyone's favorite hand seal. Shadow Clone Jutsu. A shadow clone appeared where Naruto was a second ago, taking the strike and bursting into smoke. This move was witnessed by the so-called out cold Kakashi, who made a mental note to punish the others later. Not being undone, Sasuke did a series of hand signs before ending on a tiger seal. High release. Great fireball technique. 
a large ball of fire flew from the mouth of the Achiha and flew straight at their foe. The foe calmly did the hand signs bird, boar and serpent. Water release. Bubble barrier. The ninja let out a burst of bubbles from his mouth, which formed into a wall that took the fireball head on and negated it entirely. Should Sasu grumbled as Sakura charged at the ninja with a fury, a kunai in hand. Time to prove myself worthy of Sasu-kun, a ninja who plays with bubbles is no match for she was thinking before the ninja did hair, monkey, horse and rat. In Jutsu, Zora's illusion of darkness. Sakura suddenly dropped her kunai and fell to the ground, twitching. However, no one noticed her nose bleed. Sasu-kun, oh, oh, oh. Sakura ch Naruto said, before finding himself unable to call her that, before he created a series of shadow clones who charged at the Rouge Ninja. The ninja quickly put together the hand signs Dragon and Tiger. Foolish, wind release. Hurricane gust. The ninja inhaled deeply, before letting out a gust of high-powered wind that blew away about all of the shadow clones, before he heard a crunch in the leaves. Turning, he saw to his shock two shadow clones coming at him from behind. Little brat must have used those clones as a distraction, impressive. Get out of my way, dope, fire release. Great fireball technique. Out of nowhere, a huge fireball flew and consumed the shadow clones and flew at the rouge. Team, you ruined my plan. Narita yelled. So what, as a chiha, my plans are naturally better, dope the still immobile Kakashi was fuming now. That boy was getting trialed when they got back. Actually, those shadow clones were more likely to succeed than your pathetic fireball, water release. Gunshot. A burst of water flew from the ninja's mouth, followed by several more. The fireball was hollowed out to resemble a flaming donut before it faded, as the water bullets flew into the woods, before bursting and sending Naruto and Sasuke flying into the air. The Ichiha hit the ground, as did Naruto a second later, before he burst into smoke. What, another shadow clone? The Rouge Ninja gasped before he suddenly felt a kunai approach him. He barely managed to avoid the weapon, as dozens more flew at him. The ninja managed to avoid being turned to Swiss cheese, but one still managed to embed itself into his right leg. R-A-G-G-H. Ha! A dozen Naruto's flew from the woods, all tossing more kunai at their foe, surrounding the ninja. The ninja, with his injury, barely avoided getting any more, before he closed his eyes and wet his lips with saliva, as if to test the wind. A second later, his eyes shot open, before he jumped with his good leg and flew at the Naruto who happened to be real. Nice strategy, Jenin. I'll give you credit, you're the only one here not out cold who should even be a ninja, but I'm afraid that things end here, and now he rapidly did snake, tiger, ox, dragon, rat and dog, before his hand glowed gold. Hidden ceiling jutsu. Pafi osh plus ru, kitsuiki no seijin no cop plus. He harshly slammed his hand into Naruto's stomach, causing the boy's eyes to grow wide, before he fell unconscious, the clones poofing away with shocked expressions as well. It was at this point that Kakashi managed to force himself up. Summoning Jutsu. Kakashi quickly hit the ground and summoned his Ninkan pack, who quickly charged at the injured ninja, with plans of ripping flesh. Sorry, copy ninja, but I have other places to be. The ninja was about to be bit by bull, before he substituted with a random stick. Kakashi would have pursued him, but he was too injured to do so, so he leaned on Tazuna for support, as the old man carried the surprisingly light blonde, while he left his dogs to drag the disgraces. Then flashback. Kakashi had confined the two others in their rooms, as soon as they arrived at Tazuna's house, the doors and windows sealed. Kakashi had never seen something so disgraceful, not only had both put him and their client at risk from the beast wave palm, Sasuke could actually attack Naruto or his clones anyhow. That was so going on the report and straight to the hokage, so the old bats didn't get to intercept it. But what was that jutsu the man used on Naruto, anyway? Even this master of 1000 jutsu had no clue. Ak ninja techniques, any others come from the show or manga. Water release, bubble barrier. Rank, C. Description, creates a wall of bubbles to block attacks from the foe, ineffective against kunai and shurikens. In Jutsu, Zora's illusion of darkness. Rank, B. Description, creates a realistic illusion of one's darkest desires. Only applicable to one person at a time. Wind release, hurricane gust. Rank, B. Description, like a fire style, the user blows from their mouths a large gust of intense wind to blow away foes, limited range. Hidden ceiling jutsu, pafio sh plus ru, kitsuiki no seijin no ka plus. Rank, S. Description, that's for later. Chapter 2. And the seal of the Kaiubi. The great Kaiubi, the greatest of the bijuu or tailed beast, was in a bad mood, growling from behind her sealed cage. Of course, being sealed away in some annoying brat, your power being stolen for some two-wit idiot's use, can make you rather cross. But this boy, he was worse than any of the fox's previous hosts, for a simple reason. The Bijuu, in the beginning, were genderless monsters. 
they were neither male nor female. But based on whom they were sealed into at first, their genders were determined. Shukaku, the Hachibi and the Yambi became male, for example, while the Nibi and the Nambi, as well as herself, became female. Yes, the fearsome, nine-tailed fox, the Kaiubi no Kitsune, was female. Shocking, isn't it? Hell, the only reason she would go on rampages, with tidal waves, earthquakes and mariachi music, was because she was having, periods. But being stuck in a boy, it was maddening. Totally different thought process, for one thing, and every time he looked at a girl with a blush, the poor critter felt like a lesbian. Add to it that stupid sexy jutsu that the boy had created, and she was almost contemplating destroying the brat, once she had a chance, fading away for a time would almost be worth it. But what puzzled the Kaiubi, other than why the male she was trapped in somehow managed to be dumber than the Gobi after devouring a tank of wine and blood, a sight still laughed at in the Biju 1000 year reunion parties, was what that strange ninja used on the boy. It had done massive damage to his genetic structure, which her powers were siphoned off to heal. Bam the Yondium. Hard to believe the Kitsune found the guy attractive, or was the just for being stuck in Kashina for so long. Though, she still had a picture of the Shadai Hokage somewhere in her cell. Speaking of, for some reason, a strange scent, similar to the Shadai's, was starting to fill her cell, for odd reasons, but she could also detect a much fouler scent, and others she didn't recognize. Of course, then there was the new seal, that was sitting on a large column of marble right in front of her, showing a giant orange N, which under it was a U of a lighter shade, and going through the middle of them both in the background of it was something that looked sort of like her tail. There were kanji on the seal's various parts, multiple different pairs of them. She'd read them, if only foxes could read, or Count Realid boy must be rubbing off on her, but she was definitely sure there were less than a dozen of them, for some reason. Were the scents coming from there? Forest and land of wave. Takashi was grinning to himself. Naruto was back up and running once again. The copy nin still had no idea what sort of jutsu the kid was hit with, but he was up and running again, thanks to his tenant of course. Then, of course, Sasuke, who he had to free for his new brand of training, or torture actually for the two disgraces, had to try to stab the kid with a kunai while he was brushing his teeth after a shower, luckily it appeared Naruto was used to cold showers, and Sasuke didn't have enough steam to succeed in a stealth approach. The idiot was so going to get it when they got back, civilian council and the bats be damned, but this training should be tough enough. For you see, over the breakfast table, Kakashi had brought up a point, the hunter nin's method of killing Zabuza was off, which led to a scary possibility the maniac was still alive. So, thus the training, or for Sasuke and his pet pink Pomeranian, torture. Okay, today's training is tree climbing. Humph, what are we, monkeys? and Ichiha doesn't climb trees like some common primate Sasuke smirked, somehow ignoring the threats from Kakashi. Yeah, that was the Baka's job, Sasuke-kun is way too cool for it. Sakura chirped in. Naruto looked sadly down on the ground. Kakashi had to restrain himself from setting the girl on fire, too much paperwork. Actually, you will be climbing Kakashi smirked as he jumped onto the tree and commenced to scale up its trunk, backwards, with only his feet without your hands. Cool. Naruto smiled. White, and because of your teammates' actions, Naruto, they have to do it on their own, without any assistance of summoning Jutsu. The smirking Kakashi summoned his pack of Ninkan dogs. Every time they fall to the ground or stay on the ground, my pals will give them a reason to get back up the dogs almost appeared to be grinning. Hey, I am an Achiha, how dare you train a dobe instead of me. Because you put your injured sensei and more importantly, your client, in danger from the Rouge Ninja's attack, well Naruto used his own clone to block the attack. You also attacked his clones with a fireball jutsu. Now boys, I think those two need some motivation, Kakashi snapped his fingers as the dogs barked loudly. Sakura decided to try and stand up for the two of them. Don't you even think about sending those mutts after Sasuke-kun, my mother is on the council, she'll send you to the X. GRR. The tan-furred dog named Gariko made a few dog-style hand signs before a burst of pebbles from the ground flew and struck Sakura in her overly large forehead, causing her to yelp and jump into the tree's closet branch, rubbing her injured head. Bull and Packin then grinned, the pug and his bulldog ride doing hand signs. Bark. Bull stepped back before a large sonic bark of lightning flew at the refusing Sasuke. Dog-style fire release. Yipember. Packin snorted, dozens of small sparks flew from his nose. The sparks met the thunder bark before combining with the thunder, creating a larger sonic bark that was filled with exploding lights like fireworks. Dog-style fire release. Firework howl. Packin smirked as the blast hit Sasuke, sending him halfway up the tree, only for his head to smash through the wood like some dart. Ah, take that team. Naruto laughed, as did Kakashi. I hope that knocked some sense into them, will come on Naruto, let's train somewhere else, oh by the way, try to mark your high points, Packin send word if they cheat. 
Bacha Kakashi saw the pack and smirked. Later at Azuna's house. The day was a rewarding day, for Kakashi and Naruto that is. The two, sitting around the fire late at night with a cup of hot chocolate, something Naruto seemed to quickly take to. Kakashi heard that Gatu imported them from a port town in the land of hot water, Kakashi decided to get some next time they went on a mission around there. Kakashi smiled as he observed his current favorite student sip his drink. Kakashi not only got to see his two problem students utterly embarrassed in such a fashion, but was also able to teach Naruto a great deal. Kakashi was starting to get the big picture, Naruto was a kinetic learner, so he learned things by doing, not with reading on it like Sakura did. He also had shadow clones, and with them was able to learn at an astonishing rate. With hundreds of clones, he was quickly able to scale the trees to their halfway point, and his last climb had set him up to the top of the tree. He was saddened to hear, however, that Sakura had matched it an hour later and Sasuke 15 minutes afterwards. Though he was happy to see that they elected to skip dinner, apparently they were covered in burn marks, bruises, bite marks and smelled like dog piss. Naruto-san Kakashi spoke up, politely respecting his star pupil, while back in Konoha, Himura, Kaharu and Mrs. Haruno appeared to be sweating in their sleep, like they were having some sort of nightmare. His student looked up from his drink at his mask sensei. Yeah, Kakashi sensei. Kakashi looked serious. You're going to have to be careful with your jutsu for now on Kakashi commented. How come, Kakashi sensei? Naruto was alarmed, did he have to stop with his shadow clones? As you know, I fear that Zabuza is still alive and that most likely, the hunter Nin is with him. If that is true and if Sasu continues his trend of arrogance, it is likely that he will fight more than he can chew and enter a life and death situation. I'm all for him getting beaten into a corner like that, maybe give him some humility, but if he does, his Sharingan could activate. Wait, you mean the whole copy jutsu thing? Naruto said, starting to get it are you saying he might steal my patented sexy jutsu? Bakashi groaned, you had that thing patented Naruto smiled. Yeah, apparently Oji-san thought it would be useful for seduction missions, whatever those are Naruto shrugged. Kakashi was now sighing. Worse than that, your shadow clone jutsu. I'm going to have to watch it too, but if he gets his Sharingan up and running, he could start trying to gain jutsu that way, but the fact is, he'll go overboard with it, just to surpass you, lose all his chakra, and die, and you will be blamed for it by the council. Kakashi finished. Naruto smirked. So, all I have to do is try to keep the team from overdoing it, and my shadow clones are free range. Until I can apply the Sharingan proofing seal to you, yes. In the scroll of sealing was a seal made by the ancient Senju that made one's jutsu safe from the theft of the Sharingan. With the competition between the two genin, that jutsu could be their savior. What about you, you have 1000 jutsu he could steal Naruto asked concerned. I can't seal it onto myself, it will wreck my Sharingan eye, though unlike you, I can be subtle in my jutsu. Hey, I can avoid half the village's chunin force for over two hours, I call that subtle, Databeo. And your sexy jutsu. The, I guess you have a point there. Several day later. After several days of guarding the bridge builder, one emotional clash between Naruto and the builder's grandson, more dog bites and a lot of remedial tojutsu, Naruto's tojutsu had rapidly improved to a point he could hold out against Kakashi in it, for five minutes anyway, with the itcha itcha in hand. Even the others were improving, though Kakashi had them spar alone, with several dogs watching them. Anyway, Naruto was taking a break from shadow clone training, while Kakashi took watch over at the bridge. However, as he relaxed, he failed to notice a black-haired youth in a pink kimono approach him from the woods with a basket filled with herbs. These, one of the ones guarding the bridge builder the person thought perhaps, I should take him out now, one foot to the neck ought of do it, it was at that point that said boy jumped up in surprise, with a kunai in hand. Who's there, I'm a ninja, and I'm Armado, hey there Naruto rubbed the back of his head nervously. The stranger got a look at him, the orange wearing weirdo stuck out like a thumb, pretty much anywhere. Strange garb for a stealthy ninja, though then again Zabuza, the stranger's savior, carried a giant butcher knife around. Hello the stranger smiled. The boy, Naruto blushed. Oh, hey there. The name's Naruto, of Kanahagakur. My name's Haku, I live around here, and I'm looking for herbs the person smiled. Herbs. What do you need a bunch of weeds for? The person smiled. I have an important person, he's in need of healing, and so I decided to look for some. The strange person named Haku, who Naruto sort of couldn't tell the gender of, continued to forage in the grassy clearing for seemingly random herbs. An important person? Naruto asked. Haku continued to forage. Of course, don't you have any? Naruto smiled. Of course, there are Ruka-sensei, Oji-san, Tuchi-sama, Aim-chan, and Kakashi-sensei Naruto stood up. Haku couldn't help but smile smiled. You seem to care about a lot of people. 
That's good, for you see, they say you can only be your strongest if you're protecting someone precious to you, there is a saying around here Haku smiled, before getting up and leaving. Naruto looked up into the clouds. Yeah, and that's why I want to be Hokage. Ah, ninja techniques, any others come from the show or manga. Dog style earth release, pebble musket. Rank, D. Description, an Incan dog focuses and nearby pebbles fly and strike its foe. Is mainly used to deal with insects. Dog style, lightning release, thunder bark. Rank, B. Description, the dog focuses and a large sonic bark infused with chakra and electricity is sent flying at the foe. Dog style fire release, yip ember. Rank, D. Description, the dog sneezed, sending small embers flying at the foe. Mainly used to deal with insects. Dog style fire release, firework howl. Rank, A. Description, the collaboration between an electric release howl jutsu and a fire jutsu, a large sparking fire is sent at the foe, with massive power behind it. Debuza and Haku's room, Gatu's fortress. The tall, fearsome, and most horrifying of all, eyebrowless Abusa, of the seven swordsmen of the mist, rolled his shoulders, with a concurring pop. His assistant, the young Haku, smiled. You're feeling better, Zabuza Sama Haku asked. If anything could be seen under Zabuza's mask over his mouth, he might actually be smiling. Yes Haku-chan, I am. Zabuza had found the young Haku during a mission many years ago, before his attempted coup against the Yandium Mizukage. While she, yes his companion was female, hadn't taken part, she agreed to leave with him and has since followed him on his mission to get enough money and physical power to help his old friend. Truth was Abusa was old friends with Yugura, the Yandium Mizukage and Jinchuriki of the Sanbi, the three-tailed turtle. Back in his childhood, they had been friends, both were misunderstood orphans, Zabuza just a few years older than Yugura. In fact, the reason he slaughtered an entire graduation class, besides to prove that an orphan with self-training was good enough to be a Mizu ninja, but also to spare Yugura the fate of fighting your own comrades. Because of everyone's hatred for him, he would have been gang attacked, and if the Three Tails was unleashed. Zabuza had also known Yudakata, the Rakubi Jinchuriki. Back in the day they had fought together, once he, Yudakata and Yugura had single-handedly defeated an entire army of shinobi from the Land of Frost during the Third Shinobi World War. However, with Zabuza's help, Yugura was able to figure out how to control the Sanbi because of a forgotten Kekai Genkai his clan had, a Dijutsu that caused Yugura's distinct purple eyes, which enabled him to control the Three Tails. He hadn't been able to activate it and the Sanbi didn't exactly help until Zabuza managed to help him. Afterwards, Yugura was quickly able to become the Yandium Mizukage at age 15 and Zabuza one of the legendary swordsmen to help his friend maintain power. Then, his friend began suffering from nightmares, all of which had a similar pattern, red eyes with Tomo. These dreams stirred the three tails, causing the poor cage horrid nightmares and hallucinations. Then, there was the Kiri Council. By Kanoha, the council had a civilian side, and they were petrified of Kekai Genkai. This, rather absurd fear resulted in a war in Mizu decades ago, that they kept alive in the civilians of the Land of Water via propaganda, as well as the ninja villages. That's why clans like the Yuki that Haku hailed from had to go into hiding. The last time he had seen Yugura, he had just had one of his anbu, a man named Ao, do some spying on the civilian council with his stolen Byakugan eye and had made a startling discovery. They were paying a mysterious group, with strange black robes covered in red clouds, to influence the Mizukage with a mysterious Jinjutsu, causing the unrest of the beast inside of him, that they were able to use as a sign of insanity to keep Yugura from interfering with the bloodline purges that were devastating the local ninja. These ninja, one who had a hunched back and a strange hat, and the other with long blonde hair and an obnoxious voice, never said who they brought in, but they were definitely responsible. So, Yugura gathered Ao, one of the top jonin in the village named Meitarumi, a rather attractive red head with two kekai genkai, and himself, and devised a plan. Yugura knew that dramatic action had to be done, and knowing his name would be blackened from the council's action regardless, asked his old friend to stage a coup to kill the civilian council, while Lao and Mei unsealed the three tails and released it to stop the council from getting their hands on it for their own use. However, he did leave a few requests. One, that no matter what, he protected the young Haku, who he began to see like his own daughter. She was the last of her clan, as far as he could tell, and didn't deserve what was happening here. The second was to look for his distant cousin, Yukimaru. He had heard he had vanished, picked up by the S-class Anon, Arachimaru of the Leaf Village, and Yugura was fearful that he could extort the young boy's power for his own use. So, while Zabuza managed to kill about half the civilian council and a few corrupt members of the Shinobi Council, along with some guy who sold cabbages who assaulted Yugura with them when he was a kid, failed in a complete coup and fled the village with Haku, though never finding Yukimaru, Ao and Mei managed to unseal Yugura and set up a power struggle. 
last he heard, Mei was close to becoming the Gande Mizukich, but he couldn't return yet, not until he found Yukimaru and destroyed the one who ruined his friend. Any for your thoughts, Zabuza-san. A voice spoke up. Startled, Zabuza drew his sword as Haku drew out a dozen or so senmen. There, standing at the door, was the unknown shinobi who attacked and sealed Naruto. Who are you? Zabuza demanded answer and I might not gut you. That, Zabuza-san, I can't do, but I do have, information you might be interested in Zabuza would have rose an eyebrow, if he had any. Yeah, get on with it the stranger smiled. I heard about your bond with the Yondium, your friend I believe. I have information about his controller. Care to ask? Zabuza growled. What do you know the stranger smiled under his disguise. His controller has the Sharingan. His name is Achiha Madara Haku looked confused. Zabuza Sama, from what I read, that man must be ancient, he co-founded Kanahagakur no Sado, and how can he be alive? The stranger shrugged. How does Zabuza send lack eyebrows, or how did Yugura Dono hold a giant turtle inside of him, is anything truly impossible, with enough work that is that close the argument? Yes, Madara team has many plans, but amongst them is the rebuilding of the Achiha clan to serve him. However, including himself, there are three Ichiha left in the world, and both he and Ichiha Itachi of Akatsuki are sterile, Madara from the techniques he extends his life with, and Itachi is sterile from the sickness that's consuming him, so that leaves only one Ichiha left in the world. Ichiha Sasuke, currently guarding the bridge builder. Zabuza and Haku's eyes were wide open. So, if we kill the brat, that team will be screwed, no clan for him, Zabuza grinned evilly under his mask. The stranger stayed unmoving. Or, you could capture him and force Madara to come out in the open and then take him on your own Zabuza turned towards his young ward daughter in all but law or blood. Haku-chan, change of plans, ignore the bridge builder, capture the Achiha, while I occupy the copy Nin Haku nodded. Yes, Zabuza-sama the stranger opened the window as if to jump out but left with one more thing. If you see a blonde-haired kid with whisker marks, try not to kill him. You'll only regret it. Wave Country Bridge Construction Site sometime later. Bakashi sighed, here he was, stuck on a bridge, either having to work or watch the duo while they muttered darkly and glare at him. Naruto was on house watching duty, the poor kid was exhausted for taking the entire watch yesterday, so Kakashi could make sure the duo had learned something, without dogs persuading them, so here he was, keeping tabs on Duckhead and Howler Pinky. He hoped at least they'd fall off the bridge. Of course, it had to be something else. Hey, lazy bones, you and your squirts could help, you know Tazuna grumbled. Kakashi sighed. Yes, Tazuna-san, Shadow Clone Jutsu. A second Kakashi appeared next to the original and was sent out to work. He smirked at his students. You two follow him his students groaned, but seeing as though this guy could re-summon the devils or dogs as they were actually, they decided to do it, reluctantly, while all the time, planning some way to deal with the ninja dogs. Though, while engrossed in their work, or in the only lazy bum's case, his itcha itcha, mist had begun to creep across the bridge. Meanwhile at Tazuna's house. What, are you saying that they already left to attack the bridge? Naruto demanded towards the bound samurai. The poor blonde-haired kid, having been allowed to sleep in by Kakashi, woke up to the house being broken into by two samurai thugs hired by Gatu. Though, in combination with Inari, the bridge builder's grandson, the two punks were tied up and being interrogated by Naruto and Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter, via frying pan. Smack. Ow, by Naruto kicked the swearing mercenary in the nuts. Watch it, there's a kid here, now what was this about attacking the bridge? The other hired gun smirked. You're too late kid, Zabuza's already there, tearing apart your pathetic team, and the old man Tsunami smacked him with a frying pan. Smack. Rampa Inari gasped. Naruto glared at the two. He can kill my teammates, world would be better without them, but Kakashi Sensei beat Zabuza once, he can do it again. He won't allow Tazuna Sama to die. Tsunami san, Inari kun, you can hold these guys, right? Inari grinned evilly as he nodded. Naruto smirked. He was starting to like the kid. Meanwhile back on the bridge. Vivid up Zabuza Kakashi grunted as he held back the great swordsman using a kunai. Sakura, with her own kunai in hand, was guarding Tazuna while shivering, meanwhile Sasuke had been trapped by the false hunter nin in some sort of ice mirror. The false hunter ninja was amazing, being able to use one-handed hand signs and add to it the rare ice release Kekai Genkai, and this ninja was one skilled piece of work, if they were loyal to the village, that's the type of ninja who could have become Mizukage. You won't get the bridge builder. Disturbingly, Zabuza was laughing. The laugh actually seemed to have humor behind it as it ranged out across the battlefield. He smirked. Kakashi, 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 I'm not after the bridge builder, the Ichiha is my target now, Haku will defeat him, and I will defeat you and the pink-haired waste of air over there, and I think I'll leave the old geezer be, never liked that Gatu guy much anyway, one certain pink-haired waste of space was now fuming. 
Leave Sasu Kun alone, you jerk, tell your butt buddy over there to get lost and get straight. Sakura yelled. Zabuza growled at the insult, his anger giving him leverage over Kakashi's blade. One could even see an inflated bane, or an I'm tick off mark, on his head. Listen here you brat, you pathetic talentless cunt, Haku is like my daughter, and a better Kinoichi than you ever will be, and if you call her that again, I will mount your head on my fireplace, along with that jerk who damned my best friend, and use it as a dartboard. To add insult to injury, he twisted his blade, knocked the kunai out of Kakashi's grip, and sent the Kapinin stumbling back. While not in a way to allow an easy decapitation, Zabuza instead tossed the kunai at the girl, who blocked it with her own kunai, but the blade began to spin in the air and thumped her in the large forehead, knocking her out with a concussion. Sasu Kun she mumbled in her out cold state. Zabuza growled. That type of dead weight always bit the dust in the final exams, at least Kiri was safe from that kind of ninja he spat at the ground near Sakura. Zabuza San Kakashi said with odd politeness. Perhaps the thought of losing them caused the Kapinin to respect the Demon of the Mist a bit more, as much as I would like to be free of the two imps, I would also like to keep the council for executing me for the death. The Ichiha is the pet of the elder and civilian council, whose most obnoxious member is the Pinky's mother, so I have to keep them safe, well no one said I had to teach them anything really, so, what a release. Dragon Bullet Technique. A water dragon rose, aided by the mist and the sea, and flew at the missing Nin, who did the hand sign serpent, bore, and slammed his hand to the ground. You can't win Kakashi, what a release. Turtle Barrier. A huge turtle, the shape of the Sambi in miniature, rose up from the ground and blocked the attack, sending a cascading wall of water into the air. Now Kakashi had lost the man again, thanks to the hidden Miss Jutsu in the air. High release, Night Illumination. Kakashi did a tiger seal followed by a dog, as a ring of fire flew from his hands and briefly illuminated a flash of metal, Zabuza no doubt trying the silent killing technique again. The two enemy ninja took notice of one another's moves and called out at once after several hand signs. Water style. Great waterfall technique. Two huge waves of water struck them both as the battle raged on between Haku and Sasuke, the last youth of the Achiha, and his fire jutsu, versus the last remnant of the Yuki clan and her ice mastery. He was surrounded by the mirrors with Haku warping from mirror to mirror while tossing hundreds of senbin into the last Achiha, who now resembled a rather large hedgehog. However, the Achiha had several advantages. First of all, the mirror jutsu she was using consumed a mad amount of chakra. Despite several sessions of specialized training with Zabuza, she didn't have the reserves to do this for much longer. In a ground fight, she'd be in range for his fire jutsu and that new Sharingan he had obtained after the first 50 senmen. Second, she was to take him alive, so she couldn't use lethal force, limiting her jutsu. True, while she hated killing, she had a few jutsu for that from Zabuza. Finally, that Sharingan was tracking her movements, last time he tossed a kunai during a senbin wave, she had gotten a cut on her upper arm, after a few other attempts of his, he was getting slowly closer, and she was running out of options. Perhaps a change in the flow of battle might help. Doing a few rapid one-handed seals, several ice spikes rose from the ground towards the Achiha, who easily dodged them. Is that all you got? He boasted or has my Sharingan, the ultimate Kekai Genkai, made you realize your pathetic existence pales to mine. Haku smirked as she had him where she wanted him, as she flew from an ice mirror and sent a dozen senbin straight at his unguarded back. But then his damn Sharingan kicked in. Fool, that isn't even worth copying Haku shook her head, he couldn't copy it anyway if he tried fire release. Great fireball technique. A huge fireball was blasted through the senbin, melting them before hitting Haku, knocking her back. She rolled on the ground as the flames burned a hole through the battle robes, showing an ice-colored bra underneath. Sasuke smirked. What, you're a girl. No wonder you're so weak, but I'll cut you a deal, become one of my bitches and help me revive my clan, and I'll let you live Haku groaned. No way in hell I'd do that, you duck ass, Haku said as she dissolved into water. Sasuke's eyes went wide, that was a water clone. He cursed himself for not being able to copy it before he heard creeping eyes, as an ice spike flew straight at him, with a victorious Haku smiling under her battle mask. Aim over hey, Zabuza was vague in his orders, a guy didn't need an arm to revive a clan, did he? He could be still used as bait. But then, the orange ninja with blonde hair jumped down from above. And the hero is here, Dadabeo. It's him Haku commented. Perhaps he'd be an actually decent employee. Shadow Naruto began before noticing Sasuke Sharingan. That's a dog, give me that jutsu of yours Sasuke smugly thought. He groaned before stopping his jutsu and taking the eye spike himself right through the stomach, only narrowly avoiding the heart and lungs. Naruto. Kakashi gasped from outside the battlefield before two water dragon bullets collided once more. Zabuza also commented on the battle. 
Oh no, that was off for Haku, that Ichiha must have said something really bad, have to remember to give him a little bit of torture once we have him, now to take care of you, Kakashi. Naruto's shout of pain soon filled the air. Ah he yelled out. Sasuke smirked, this was the only thing that idiot was good for, a shield to protect his betters. Haku stared at him. Why would you take that attack for this, stain on humanity Haku asked, retracting the eye spike, its frigidity barely avoided granting hypothermia, but blood loss was still occurring. Naruto groaned out. I said it, to this girl I met, and I'll say it again, I fight for my precious people. And one of them is my Oji-san, the Sandame Hokage, told me, as did Kakashi-sensei, that no matter how much of a stuck-up ass your teammates may be, you can't abandon them, if I was to let Sasuke die like this, I'd be worse than him, as those who abandon their team are lower than trash. Meanwhile, inside the seal. Finally, the time had come. The little Baka she was sealed in had gotten himself into near-mortal peril. Time for her, the Kaiubi, to save him and perhaps try to take control. She was in the mood for some destruction, or tacos, depending on what came first. However, as she let a stream of her chakra out to heal her host, she noticed some of it was being diverted, straight into that strange seal. What in Kami? The seal briefly began to glow orange, or at least in a portion of it, where a kanji glowed brightly, the kanji for storm. Back to reality. An orange-red glow began forming around Naruto, as his wound began to heal. The air began rippling with power, shaking the bridge slightly. Naruto then began forming tiger, dog, serpent and dragon. Storm release. Great twister. A huge twister of wind and lightning formed from Naruto, before expanding and crossing the field of battle, as Haku and Sasuke were pulled into its winds. What, power Haku gasped. How can the dope and why can't I copy it? Kakashi was wide-eyed, as were Tazuna and Zabuza. Haku. My bridge. Kakashi was the most shocked of all. That's a Kumo Kekai Genkai, how is that possible? Cliffinger, to be continued next chapter. Ak Ninja Techniques, any others come from the show or manga. Water Release, Turtle Barrier. Rank, C. Description, summons a large, sandy shaped wall of water to block attacks. Fire Release, Night Illumination. Rank, D. Description, creates a ring of fire to briefly light up a darker foggy battlefield. Storm Release, Great Twister. Rank, Kekai Genkai, A. Description, creates a massive twister that eats up a large amount of chakra, it traps enemies in a powerful vortex. But that, the chapter begins. Bridge, Wave Country. As the twister dissolved from the stone adorned bridge, Zabuza and Kakashi found themselves knocked to the ground, as were Haku, Tazuna and Sasuke. Sasuke was unconscious, Tazuna was moaning about his back, and Kakashi and Haku were unable to move. Only Zabuza was able to push himself up. Wait, you're, that girl from before Naruto gasped. Haku's mask had shattered, revealing her face. Yes, I am she said meekly. How would this guy act like this, she nearly killed him. She mentally prepared herself for the emotional pain that never came. Oh my god, you are so awesome. I can't believe how cool you were in thrashing that team around. He looks like a giant hedgehog, you've got to teach me how to do that. He laughed. Haku blushed, before speaking. I'm flattered, but I created the senbon I use via my kekai genkai, and you can't teach or copy that she glared at said duck hedgehog, but you were the most impressive, Naruto-san, you somehow managed to create a massive twister with some sort of kekai genkai Naruto looked confused. Ha! Ah. That giant twister, how did you create it, and where did you get the hand signs Kakashi grunted. Naruto shrugged. To be honest, I have no idea the conscious fellow's sweat dropped. He's definitely unpredictable Kakashi sighed. This was definitely going to be a lot of paperwork back in Konoha. Please tell me that there isn't a hole in my bridge Tazuna groaned. Naruto took a look at the twister site, the only thing noticeable was a lot of melted water, some team blood, a scorch mark, and small pothole. No, just a minor pothole Tazuna cursed. Yes it could have been worse, but you better put some of those clones of yours on the job, my workers are unconscious, thanks to no brows over here. Don't make me kill you. And your teammate is out cold for now, so. I'm afraid, bridge builder, that that pothole is the least of your trouble now, Voy said. Turning around, Naruto and Zabuza spotted a short man in a brown business suit, with an army of 200 assorted thugs and the occasional Yahoo. Gatu, Zabuza growled. The short man, the island's fiend, Gatu, grinned like a Cheshire cat. Ah, Zabuza-san, so you've decided to ignore my orders for the bridge builder. Too bad, I was hoping to let you kill him and those leaf nins, then kill you and collect the bounties on you and the copy nin, and be on my way. Yeah, like these fools you hired could kill me, or anyone here. Hell, the pinky could beat your jokes of an army the jokes growled at the insults Abusa had thrown at them. Gatu just smiled coldly. Ah the humor of the cornered man. 
boys, destroy the bridge builder and the traitor, whoever takes him out gets his ice bitch, and who takes the bridge builder gets the pink one. The man smirks cruelly. Naruto looked back towards Kakashi. And we just toss her at them? He shook his head, it would after all be too much paperwork. Well then boy, you're with me. Seeing as I have no more reason to take the geezer's neck and Haku's injured, I'll just kill these clowns and be on my way Naruto smirked. Need some help with that, after all, protecting Tazuna is my mission, and protecting my sensei, or any of my precious people, is my duty, as is sadly my team as well, though if they get maimed, I guess it couldn't hurt. Zabuza glanced at him. This kid was a lot like Yagura. If he squinted, he could almost see an image of his late friend overlapping the young kid and could almost hear their voices as one. The Bihokage Mizukage, that's my dream, then everyone will have to recognize me and I'll be able to protect my friends. Zabuza smiled as he hosted his massive sword. Let's do it Tazuna then wailed. Don't break my bridge, no matter what you do. The two ninja then charged at the armed horde. Naruto blocked a sword slice with a sharp kunai before creating a dozen shadow clones who charged into the armed mob with more kunai at the ready. Naruto then jumped into the air before yelling. Storm release, great twister. Now airborne, the tip of the storm just missed the bridge road and thus the mob was sucked up and spewed out randomly, hitting the ground with random snaps of broken necks and other bones. Haku and the others must have been lucky to escape so easily from the storm or was it just as bad luck that Sasuke did? Heads up Genin, what a release. Great waterfall technique. A giant wave formed from the accumulated water in the air as the huge wave swamped the battlefield, wiping away rogues, while the shadow clones were able to avoid the attack. Kakashi sighed, and Haku gave him a curious look. Is it wrong to say that Naruto and your sensei over there work better as a team than my genin? Haku laughed. Wait, they're actually a team? Back to the fight, Zabuza just cleaved a few swords man clean through before he groaned. Some punk just managed to stab him with several kunai in the back. Zabuza san. A clone gasped before Rouge destroyed it. Haku gasped. Zabuza sama. Haku cried she was unable to protect her master. She was failing as a tool, her important person was probably fatally injured. Erg, I'm sorry, Yugura-sama, Mei-chan, Ao San Zabuza gasped for air, but I'm not going down alone. He charged blindly, ignoring more accumulating injuries as he flew straight at the slowly retreating Gatu. Zabuza, spotting him, yelled out a battle cry and tossed his blade, the great blade going straight into Gatu, knocking both it and the man into the churning sea below, definitely dead. Naruto, after his shadow clones and twisters had finished off the last of the men, rushed to the downed man. Zabuza-san. He gasped. The eyebrowless man looked at the boy and smiled. This boy was again starting to look like Yugura or was his mind playing tricks on him. Boy bring me to Haku-chan, please Naruto had tears in his eyes as he dragged the slowly dying man to his daughter. He lowered him next to her as Haku struggled up. Zabuza-sama. Zabuza looked at her. Please don't die. You're my special person, my reason to live, my Tusan. She cried. Zabuza raised his hand and held it to Haku's cheek. Haku-chan, I was glad that to meet you, it was nice to have a family of some kind. I couldn't have stuck to my and Yugura-sama's plan without you. This boy, he's a lot like Yugura he turned to the boy and Kakashi. He has a biju in him, doesn't he, just like my friend, the Yandium Mizukage Naruto and Kakashi looked alarmed, Kakashi's regular eye briefly darting towards the unconscious failures of his. So, it's a secret then. Perhaps, that was better than it being known. Let me guess, it's the Kaiubi. Don't answer, it's evident on your face Abusa smiled under his ripped mask kid, your dreams, don't give up on them, no matter what. Yugura had less than you did in a town that made Kanoha look like a flower field, but he still became a cage, and I believe, you can't he smiled. Haku, I'd give you my blade, but it's kind of underwater, my bad, Haku was crying as Abusa chuckled, but no matter, you were never a killer anyway, you don't need a sword. You just need a strong friend. Kakashi-san, I wish to ask you a favor the copy nin looked over to the dying mist swordsman. Take Haku with you to Kanoha. Take her under your wing with this pathetic team of yours. Haku, like you stayed with me I asked that you stay with whatever your name was Naruto sniffled with tears. Yuzumaki, Yuzumaki Naruto. Yes, stay with Naruto-san, help him become Hokage, but boy, beware of your teammate, his clan has the power to control containers, one did so to Yugura and he'll do it to you Zabuza collapsed as Haku let out a flood of tears. Zabuza-sama. Later in the Hokage's office, Kanoha no Sado. With the death of Gatu, by the hands of the late missing Nin, Mamoichi Zabuza, things are looking up in the wave country now. The civilians ransacked his mansion and now have all the money he stole from them, as well as interest. 
great is booming, no doubt and thanks to the new great Naruto bridge Kakashi was giving his report to the Sandame, with Naruto and Haku, now with a new leaf hiate behind him. Wait, they named the bridge after me. Naruto said exited, before noticing Haku, it should have been the great Zabuza bridge Kakashi smiled. Naruto, it was you who finished the bridge via shadow clones. Well a certain duck head was stuck at the house. As it was, they named the wave entrance to the bridge the Zabuza gate and the fire entrance, the Kaisa gate Naruto noticed Haku smile sadly at this. Naruto-kun, Kakashi-san, well done the Hokage smiled as he blew from his pipe, you both went above and beyond the mission, which was evolved from a C rank to an A rank. I've already sent a bonus, along with your original pay straight to both of your accounts, Naruto's account was guarded by one of the Hokage's oldest friends in the bank, one who knew about Naruto's father. The man was firmly entrenched when it came to the vault, in his time he stopped countless attempts of civilians and ninja to take Naruto's cash for either spite or to repay the damage the Kaiubi left. And you, Hakusan, I've already sent the non-bonus payments of both Haruno Sakura and Ichiha Sasuke, whose pay was deducted due to their crimes as well their names being removed from the mission records on this mission. As well as a large fine deducted from their family account sent to Naruto's and Kakashi's accounts, and the both of them placed on a full week of the most horrible D-ranked missions, including catching Tora, cleaning the public restrooms, and removing massive bunions from Choji's grandmother's feet. He tried to get them sent back to the academy, but the civilian council and elder council stood firmly against it, though he oddly got Danzo's support. Into a new account in your name that I set up. That should be well enough to help get you started before you take on more missions with Team 7. However, there is the matter of the bingo book price for Zabuza. Send it to the people in Wave Haku said sadly, I can't use that kind of money Naruto placed a hand on her shoulders as Haku blushed. Um, Haku, you okay, you kind of look like you have a fever or something, Kakashi smiled at Naruto's question. The kid was more concerned in how Haku was feeling, instead of trying to get a ribbon chick. Okay, I understand the Hokage smiled Kakashi will give you elemental training, while the rest of your team, as loosely as I can apply that term, is done with their punishment. Naruto-kun, I hope you don't mind, but I was unable to secure housing for Haku-san at the moment, so she'll have to stay with you. That was all that could be said before Haku fainted. Well somewhere in town, a pay light era suddenly felt someone was ripping her off somehow. Haku-san, Haku-san. Naruto shook her, before looking around at the older men. They smiled. I believe Haku-san is tired, why don't you take her to your home? Naruto nodded vigorously before taking the unconscious girl with him out of the room. Now the old Hokage turned towards Kakashi. Kakashi, I also read in your written report about Naruto's sudden ability to use the Kumo Kekai Genkai, Storm Release, and the mysterious attacker, and I believe I may have an idea of what the attack was. I have never seen it myself, but it's an ancient technique, from years back. It's a seal that transfers Kekai Genkai. As you may or may not know, Kekai Genkai originated as genetic mutations or as an advanced chakra skill, found in one out of a thousand shinobi. However, these were not something that could be passed on, much like Tenzo is not able to pass on his wood release Sirachimaru grafted onto him, or you and your Sharingan. However, this Jutsu would pass the traits to another person, and grafted it into their DNA in a way that allowed for genetic passing of the traits. However, your description may describe something else, an evolved version of the technique for passing multiple Kekai Genkai, but as to the attacker, I have no leads. At the same time, the sheer amount of genetic alteration that seal must have done to Naruto would kill any regular person. What about that Haruko guy, who rumor says is preparing a way to obtain multiple ones, perhaps he has. And why would he give them to a leaf nin? He fled the village when the Nine Tails was announced, he's terrified of it. No way in hell would he give that sort of power to Naruto. So, thus the attacker and his motives remain unknown. Meanwhile at a hill in wave. The wooded hill, sitting with a view of the sea, with a simple tombstone that simply read Mamoichi's Abusa, the stranger appeared to be paying his respects. He sighed. This changes my plan. Your apprentice by going with our young Jinchuriki alters my plans, but not in a negative way. Zabuza, you died a hero, I hope Kami sees that he drew a scroll and opened it, revealing a very thin transparent veil of some sort. Ceiling style. Undisturbed rest of the dead. The stranger covered the tomb with a veil, the veil not detectable by chakra or the human eye. However, the grave glowed as the seal took effect. Wood release. Rise of the red fern the stranger did a single dog hand sign as a red fern formed next to the grave. He chuckled. I've been reading that book too much he chuckled as he left the hill. Ah techniques, not in an Imer manga. Sealing style, undisturbed rest of the dead. Rank, S. Description, a seal is applied to a grave, protecting the buried body from grave robbers until the body decomposes. Wood release, rise of the red fern. Rank, Kekai Genkai, E. 
Description, a red fern is grown. Not really an offensive skill. The chapter begins. With the rejects, outside of Kanoha public bathroom. How dare they make an Ichiha clean filth from mere commoners. This is the sort of thing the dope and his ice bitch should be doing, not me. Sasu declared angrily. Of course, the Anbu, who was wearing a duck mask, had been put in charge of watching them by the Sandame, and so didn't respond. Best not give the idiot any satisfaction. However, the two were refusing to enter the bathroom, stubbornly crossing their arms looking away. This is a job for the dope and his new ice bitch, not for me, the last Acha. Yeah, Sasu-kun is better than this. They continued to rant until the bathroom's occupant, Chao Akimichi exited. As he spotted the two troublemakers, he got an evil grin on his face. Ah, the two, Jenin. I am Ichiha, idiot. My mother's on the civilian council, so don't you dare treat me like that unless you want your F. The duck Anbu quickly sealed their mouths shut with his hands. The Anbu were the cage's self-selected special operations units. They did their operations covertly and silently and helped maintain order in the village. Because their missions were covert, they were not on record for either ninja or civilian. Recently, the Sandame had begun renovating the Yandame's house on the edge of the village. Only accessible from a hidden space-time warp point in the Hulkage office, unless you had the key of course, this house was originally supposed to be given to Naruto once he became a Chunin, as well as his heritage. By then, the Sandame had hoped that the young boy would be strong enough for the resulting assassination attempts. This would also help curb down anti naritoism However, two things had changed. The first of them was his new rivalry with Sasuke. Once this became knowledge amongst the populace, there was no doubt that attacks against Naruto would increase, beyond the basic food price overcharging and possible lesson sabotage. While he knew of a few Anbu who already were outspoken against Naruto, the Sandane didn't want to risk one of the boy's guards going turncoat and aiding attackers. The second was the appearance of Haku. Naruto, while no Casanova, still had to share a single-bedroom apartment, so a several-bedroom house might be more preferable. However, another of the more covert missions of the Anbu was to prevent anyone calling an Akamichi some sort of derogatory remark. Past experience has long taught the dangers of insulting people who could grow to the size of hills. Yes, Akamichi-sama. The large man grinned. Getting those two trapped on this duty may have earned Danzo the hop spring tickets, but this would be worth a paid night of dining for him, his wife and their son, on their friend's tabs of course. As he thought this, Inoichi found himself suddenly shivering, and Shikaku suddenly felt glad to be on an A-rank mission. Yes, it is quite convenient, for you see, I just got done sampling a delicious meal at Gasanyurashi, a new eatery on the west side of town, with a fine fiber and bean casserole, and well green mist suddenly began creeping from under the bathroom door. The two idiots then began to try and squirm away from their duty, slash doom. Quickly, the Anbu shoved them into the bathroom, sealed the door and held the door back as the children began to desperately pound away. Some of the escaped green gas then approached a nearby tree and the poor plant exploded into bark and dead leaves. Chowza chuckled and hummed merrily as he imagined the buffet awaiting him as Duck whistled for backup. The snail-masked Anbu jumped down from a nearby building to his call. Duck, what's the problem? I need you to hold these poor genin in here for a while. I have just received word of a food item at a new eatery that may be a danger towards humanity. Let me out of here, this isn't even fit for a dope. Sasu yelled from inside the bathroom, and now the pink-haired fangirl just collapsed. Meanwhile with the so-called dope. Bakashi, Haku and Naruto found themselves at a lake on the outskirts of the Hidden Leaf Village, preparing for a lesson while the others were out of the way. Okay team, today we are going to practice some water release techniques Kakashi smiled. Naruto raised his hand. Yes Naruto. Wait, Kakashi-sensei, since when did I get water release? Kakashi smiled. It came with your storm release, Naruto. Kekai Genkai such as storm and ice release come from the genetic combination of two or more elements. For example, storm is a mixture of lightning and water release, while ice is a mixture of wind and water release. Now, I'm focusing on water release because that is a release we know both of you can use Haku and Naruto nodded. Tabuza sama already taught me how to create a water clone, Kakashi-sensei Haku brought up. Kakashi smiled. True, but because Naruto's shadow clones already fill that niche, I believe that we should try to get something else in, before they get back Naruto suddenly looked like he recalled something, started fiddling with hand signs slowly. Perhaps we should start with the water prison, I think that Naruto could pull that off nicely with his shadow clones, or perhaps we should Naruto end it on a bird hand sign. Hope this works, water release. Great waterfall technique. No, Naruto. Kakashi yelled before all three of them were engulfed in a huge tidal wave. Gulping for air, both Haku and Kakashi quickly got back on the surface of the water and obtained balance, but as Naruto rose, he just kept blubbering around. 
or perhaps Naruto-sama should focus on water walking first Haku commented at his blubbering form with a blush. Kakashi frowned. True enough, but I don't know if I should be impressed with him for somehow picking up that technique on his own, or somewhat annoyed. The last day before Sasuke and Sakura freedom. After six days of trial, error, near drowning and an angry Mrs. Haruno and the two bats demanding the lessons ceased with the foreign Kanoichi and the dead last, and instead focus on the Ichiha and his pink cheerleader of horror, once free from the poison ward at the hospital. They were getting shown the great waterfall jutsu. Now, standing on the surface of the lake was Naruto, clad in an orange pair of swimsuit trunks, against Haku, who was in a bluish-white one-piece swimsuit with Kakashi standing on the lake shore. Now that Naruto had finally gotten water walking down, it was time to test how far they had come. Haku was to become a member of Team 7 for the time being, and Kakashi needed to make sure that both of them were ready to go out for any more missions like Wave. Now that both had seals on them, administered by Kakashi himself, to block the Sharingan, their moves were free to go. Let's see how good you are, Naruto-kun Haku smiled. Naruto sighed, it was either this or Sama. Naruto began to do several rapid hand signs, for, lightning release. Thunderball. A ball of static electricity formed in Naruto's hand before he tossed it at Haku, overhanded. The ball struck her head on before she dissolved into water. The water clone. Naruto said surprised. It was then that he noticed the water below him to begin to rapidly bubble. Water release. Explosion. An explosion of air flew from below Naruto, sending him flying into the air as Haku burst to the surface, giggling. Naruto's eyebrow rose slightly before doing his favorite hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu. A dozen shadow clones formed from above and all created thunderballs before tossing them straight at Haku. Ice release. Protective ice dome. A dome of ice formed around Haku, blocking the shadow clone's attacks. Flying from the dome came dozens of ice spikes that quickly pierced the attacking clones, leaving only the original. Not bad, storm release. Great twister. A huge twister formed on the lake surface, spinning straight towards Haku, destroying her ice dome, but the girl was nowhere to be found. Wait, where did you go? Naruto was looking around confused. Water release. Explosion. Naruto was sent flying into the air once again before exploding into smoke. Haku gasped. A shadow clone. Water release. Great waterfall technique. A surge of water crossed the wave surface, swamping Haku and sending her flying to the shore. Apparently, Naruto had created an extra shadow clone and used him as a distraction as he prepared the destructive jutsu. Haku then found herself panting on the lake shore, with Naruto lounging beside her. Not bad Haku-chan, not bad at all Naruto smiled. The girl smiled, it took him long enough to call her that. Not bad yourself, Naruto-kun Kakashi smiled as he shimmered over towards them. Pine spar today, and tomorrow we begin our first mission as a united team again Haku and Naruto groaned, Kakashi sighed, I hate them too, but we have to put up with them. Hopefully, it will be something where you guys won't need to kill one another over. What they didn't realize were two things. First of all, they were being watched from on top of a cliff nearby, via the wide-eyed, all-seeing by Akigen, by none other than Naruto's admirer stalker, the blue-haired, blue-eyed Hinata Hayuga. She had a smile on her face after watching the two fight. Amazing Naruto-kun, those jutsu were incredible. I hope I can pull off something just as amazing she poked her fingers together. She would match Naruto's skill one day and then earn his heart, though this new girl could be trouble for that plan. Smiling, she decided to ask Kurenai-sensei if she could give her some extra training tomorrow. The other was the mission itself they would get. Team 7 had no idea what they were about to find themselves thrust into. In a misty hideaway in the land of tea, altar room. Locked up in a cage, sitting next to a floor littered in coal, was a large bird. Not just any type of bird, but an ostrich. This ostrich, who had three pink ribbons on his neck, was an ostrich that Team 7 had returned home on a mission some time ago. This was Mr. Ostrich. The bird was glaring angrily at his captor, before somehow manifesting a voice, yelled. What's the big idea, locking me in this cage? Just who do you think you are? A male voice then laughed. Oh sorry, my ninja ostrich friend the bird paled yes, I know about your practice in the ninja arts, plotting your escape and your freedom. I recently heard you successfully mastered the shadow clone jutsu, no. Maybe, but only to earn my freedom. Humans will not hold me in their possession forever. The voice laughed out again cheerfully. Who knows, if this goes wrongly, you might just be freed forever the bird paled, did this guy plan to kill him but, as for a name a figure walked out of the shadows, before the ostrich. You may refer to me as Taesun it was the mysterious shinobi. Ah, techniques and description. Lightning release, thunderball. Rank, C. Description, compresses electric chakra into a ball in one's hand to throw at foe. Water release, explosion. Rank, C. 
Description, air is funneled into massive bubbles below the foe, before they rapidly burst to the surface with great force. Samui still holds a lead in the pole, huh that's new, someone actually keeps their position day to day. Apparently Minitsune is popular. Okage's office. A Sandane was stuck behind a mountain of paperwork, almost wishing he would keel over right this minute. Perhaps the greatest enemy of any cage was the mountains of paperwork that resulted. Sure, whenever a big shot like a Biju attacked, you got to fight, and you got your face on the monument, but all the paperwork was still nasty. Add to it that almost all of the paperwork was from the civilian council. Lessening of the vandalism punishment, are they trying to ask permission to ransack Naruto's apartment, denied. The Hokage tossed the paper aside, in the much larger pile. Did they really think they'd get these laws? Honestly, were they just trying to annoy him? Back in his youth and during the other Hokage's reigns, the cages would use bunchons to do the paperwork. Much less stressful, and it freed up time to go out with Yureya for research. Am aging, he just couldn't do a good shadow clone to do his job like he used to. His chakra replenished too slowly, and his clones last too shortly, to do it without killing himself. The Sandane wasn't quite sure if the other cages did the same thing for their paperwork, though he did know that the young Takigakur leader, Shibuki, had came to Konoha for shadow clone lessons with Abisu. The Kigakur, the village had an alliance with Kanahagakur, and it had since the first great ninja wars. In fact, that village was one of the reasons behind his law concerning Naruto. He had been old friends with Shibuki's father, and he heard about how they treated their Jinchuriki, a young orphan girl named Fu. Apparently, Shibuki was her only friend, and her cousin as it appeared. The Sandame hoped that his law would at least make things simple enough for Naruto, and seeing as he wasn't mugged in the streets, perhaps it worked. Or was it just as loyal Anbu, Chunin and Jonin, like Kakashi, Gai, Anko, Shikaku, Haruka and Tenzo? Of course, this wasn't Kumo, which the Sandame saw as the best place for Jinchuriki. Soon as Jinchuriki was hated and driven insane, though the child was only Naruto's age, the Iwa Jinchuriki both left the village, with one of them loathing humanity, Kiri's Yondium was tortured by Samaj Jinjutsu, while the Six Tails had become a missing nin. But the cage had tried to track down at one point hoping he could teach Naruto about his powers, and the acid burns his Anbu received showed the guy wasn't interested. But Kumo, because of one Jinchuriki called Killer B's heroic actions, valued the two of them greatly. They even had a Jinchuriki festival once a year. Though perhaps it was because B was the son of their Sandame and the brother of the Yondium Rakage, the two even had their own houses. Though, such debates were just for thought. He then reluctantly returned to his paperwork. Removal of teacher Iruka Yamino for blatant favoritism towards Naruto Uzumaki, honestly, are they just trying to punish those close to Naruto? He then signed something below it, revised, removal of teachers and political figures that showed blatant antagonism towards Naruto for only his special problem, before sending it back via Anbu. He wondered how they would react. Speaking of Iruka, their investigation had turned up some evidence for them. Iruka had evaluated Naruto's old textbooks and found that several key pages were missing, such as ones on the clone jutsu, jinjutsu, chakra control enhanced signs. They also appeared removed by a low-level water jutsu scalpel, something taught by medical nin, which Naruto certainly was not, nor any academy student before him, but the principal of the academy was trained as a medical nin. This man was currently held in interrogation, with Anko who had found a new torture involving rope, a sharp clawed obese feline, and that recently banned dish from the new eatery, that fiber bean casserole. Saratobi didn't want to think about it. But hopefully, Naruto would receive the justice he deserved for all of his harsh treatment, perhaps by the time he returned from his C-rank mission with Team 7, to find a stolen ostrich, of all things, out in tea country. But just as he finished denying a request for the right for civilians to bear guns in Konoha and the use of them to protect their properties, probably some other harebrained scheme to harm Naruto, a loud scream was let out from a nearby room. Here's an. How dare you threaten just teachers and the entire civilian and elder council. That DBOY is addling your mind. Kahari yelled at him. He chuckled, this was actually kind of fun. And they were wrong, Danzo was actually on his side these days. Perhaps bringing a rare mistress of the ice Kekai Genkai, or perhaps gaining one himself, swayed his old rival. Garazin smiled, before sending his Anbu to remove her. Land of Tea, Road Before. In an ideal story, the merry team of four, led by their sensei, would be rapidly approaching their target without a hitch. Of course, life isn't just some story written by anyone. No, while Team 7 was making good time, there was a clear divide in the air. On one side there was Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke was glaring at his teammates Haku, Naruto and their sensei, Sharingan ablaze. Sakura stood behind him, being useless as always. Alright dope, do a shadow clone. Sasuke ordered. Naruto smiled evilly, with Haku behind him, but unlike Sakura, she wouldn't be useless if this got ugly. Kakashi sighed, this wouldn't end well. 
And why should I, team? The team glared, but his Pomeranian barked. Because he ordered you to, Baka. Sasuke, learn the thing yourself, and not with those pathetic eyes of yours, Naruto smiled as he walked swiftly up to Kakashi with Haku behind him. Kakashi actually seemed surprised. You know, it's nice to see you're able to just walk away like that, Naruto. Perhaps you're maturing, Naruto smiled. Ash, thanks Kakashi, though being more mature than the team might just be like saying you're faster than a rock behind him, two pairs of eyes bored into him. But before they could try to stab them in the back. Greetings, Team 7. So, nice of you to show the team rapidly turned around in shock. Right behind them was the mysterious Nukunin. You. Give me your power like you did the dope Sasuke demanded. The figure raised an eyebrow, unseen behind his darkened face. And why should I do that, Ichiha-san? Kakashi was slightly more upfront. No mind games, whoever you are, I never got your name. You may call me, Taesun. Taesun, what game is it you're playing anyway? Attacking Leaf Nin, pretending to be on Gatu's side. Wait, Yuhaku said surprised. All heads turned to her. Haku-chan, you know this guy? Naruto asked confused. She nodded. Yes, this man talked to Zabuza-sama and me before we went to the bridge, something about Zabuza-sama's past Haku seemed to be glaring at Sasuke as she said this Taesun was what you said, true. I must know. Taesun stood unwavering. It is true. Yugura was ruined by one of his kind he glared at Sasuke, but that's not why I'm here. You can just call that confirmation of a tidbit. You kidnapped an ostrich, dare I ask why? Kakashi questioned. Taesun laughed. Now, I could explain my complicated plan, but your genin just don't have the attention span. Let me just give you a brief rundown, it's all about an experiment to obtain the power I need to avenge well actually why am I talking when I should be blistinkbist wave palm. A wave palm of air was sent flying at the group with a large explosion ensuring. Shadow clone jutsu. The explosion the smoke it gave off gained a new tint from the obvious use of a shadow clone shield. Taesun stood unwavering as the smoke cleared to show Naruto charging at him. Lightning release. Thunderball. A ball of electricity formed in Naruto's hands before it was tossed straight at Taesun. The man smirked. Storm release. Cloud wall. A wall of storm clouds formed in front of him, blocking the attack with an explosion of clouds. But from that smoke cloud, a dozen shadow clones flew at him. Uzumaki barrage. A dozen punches and kicks were sent straight at Taesun, who was sent flying into a tree. However, he quickly got back up and smiled. Your Tujutsu improved, eh? Well then, prepare for some fun. He dissolved into water. Kakashi then got poked in the shoulder as two clones of Taesun appeared next to him. Storm release. Blade of Katrina. Two blades of thickened clouds formed in the hands of the clones who sliced them at the copy nin. The water clone, and why can't I copy it Sasuke grumbled as a shadow appeared behind him. It was Taesun. Quickly twisting, Sasuke blocked a fist from Taesun before he smirked before dissolving again into water with another behind him. Wind release. Hurricane gust. Both Sakura and Sasuke were blown into a tree. However, he then felt his feet chill. Ice release. Ice manacles. Ice manacles had formed at Taesun's feet. Haku smirked. Ice release. Ice spike. Spikes of ice flew and pierced Taesun's chest before he became a wooden log. It was a substitution. What, not again? Naruto groaned. This guy was slippery. Kakashi, who had just taken out the water clones with a swiping Chidori, turned towards Haku and Naruto. Fighting this guy isn't going to be easy, you two need to find that oversized pigeon he has here, so we can get the hell out of here Naruto was shocked. But you'll be overwhelmed by this guy. Beast wave palm. A wave palm flew and struck near them, destroying the last few shadow clones near them. Haku nodded. Naruto-kun, we can't wait. Kakashi sensei is right, we need to complete our mission. Naruto sighed before the two of them jumped into the trees. Taesun watched them leave. Erg, there goes my fun. Fire release. Great fireball technique. A huge fireball went flying straight at Taesun, who gazed at it with half his closest eye before doing a few hand signs. Fire release. Flame bullet. A larger fireball flew from Taesun's mouth and struck the fireball head on. It extinguished them both. Taesun then commented. Wow, you actually have a rather impressive fireball, or it was a fluke Sasuke was angry now and thus charged straight at him. With Tejutsu, Taesun blocked his fists before tripping Sasuke with his leg, sending the boy to the ground. Storm release. Blade of Katrina. A blade of clouds formed and was lowered straight at Sasuke before from out of nowhere, a great fireball flew into him and sent him flying. Kakashi had saved the last Ichiha, again too much paperwork if he died. However, Taesun dissolved into water again. Shit, this guy can't be human with all this chakra Sasuke grumbled, failing to acknowledge his sensei saving his life. 
Taesun, now in the apple tree above him, quickly did a jutsu. Wind release. Drill air bullet. A burst of air like his other bullets flew straight at the genin, jonin, and out cold lump of a pinky. Kakashi quickly did another great fireball that struck the drill air bullet and destroyed it. Kakashi was cursing inside though, with that boy Sharingan, he couldn't use most of his arsenal. However, Taesun seemed to ignore the Sharingan for some reason. The reason Sasuke demanded answers for. Why can't I copy your jutsu? Taesun chuckled. It's simple really, I know how to cancel the Sharingan's effect on me. It's really quite simple. How dare you, the Sharingan is the ultimate Kekai Genkai. Ninja art. Apple Shuriken. The apples on the tree Taesun was hiding in flew at Sasuke before splitting into pieces and impacting into his forehead rapidly, knocking him unconscious. I believe a not wise man once said, flutter like a butterfly, sting like a bee, no. This is buzzing like a bee, striking like a butterfly. Kakashi saw it now. Taesun had massive chakra stores and used massive jutsu to wear his opponent out before taking them out with lower leveled ones, like the apple shurikens. And it was working, Sasuke was panting, and he was running on maybe 25%. This guy could make some mean water clones. He sighed before taking a gamble. Focusing lightning formed in and around his hand his hand, with bird calls shortly behind. It was the Chidori, he was too exhausted for his lightning cutter, so this would have to do. Hey soon, prepare to meet your end. Kakashi began charging straight at the enigmatic ninja, with his Chidori ablaze. Taesun smiled under his darkened face. Ah, this looks like fun, if you really want to, storm release. Dual blade strike, Katrina and Andrew. Two blades of storm chakra formed into Taesun's hands before he jumped straight down at Kakashi. But as the two S-class shinobi were about to clash, they failed to notice one thing. Sasuke was watching Kakashi with Sharingan ablaze. Akjutsu and techniques. Storm release, Blade of Katrina. Hekai Genkai, A. Description, a blade of clouds is formed and can be used until dispelled or destroyed. Storm release, Cloud Wall. Hekai Genkai, C. Description, a wall of clouds is formed to absorb and neutralize lightning or water-based attacks. Ice release, Ice Manacles. Hekai Genkai, D. Description, ice forms around the foe's feet or arms, restricting their movements. Ninja Art, Apple Shurikens. Rank, D. Description, apples are sent flying at your opponent before dividing and striking with force. Good for training. The chapter ignites now. Land of T, Battlefield. The two attacking ninja, the copy nin Kakashi Haddock and the mysterious Enigma Taesun, crossed paths before the both of them found themselves standing on opposite ends of one another, their jutsu dissipated. Kakashi and Taesun kept silent for a second before Kakashi yelled out. The gash mark was on his side, rapidly bleeding blood. Holding onto his side, Kakashi dropped to one knee, the ground next to him quickly reddening. Taesun smirked from under his hood. So, it appears that this game is he dropped down to one knee as well, as spare electric chakra was coursing across him from the Chidori. It appeared that they both were unable to go on. But as it was, the arrogant duck-haired boy, Sasuke, forced himself up. Not bad, Kakashi. Nice job weakening this fool, now to take him out, with my new jutsu, Chidori. The electric chakra formed onto his arm, with a thousand birds chirping all at once. Sakura, who was now back up, gleamed with admiration. Amazing. Sasuke-kun, rocks. Kakashi was cursing inside. The fool now had an assassination jutsu. He was going to regret this, and he was starting to despise anyone born with a Sharingan, except Abito. Perhaps just because he didn't activate it until minutes before he died and didn't steal that fucking jutsu of his. Heisun was wide-eyed under his cloak. Of course, the fool had to slip up, and the Achiha now had a deadly jutsu. This was just going to complicate his plans. Jidori. Sasu charged at Taesun before Sasu twitched as a second later the Chidori flicked away. Sasu then collapsed. Taesun breathed in relief, the fool was out of chakra now. Kakashi was mildly worried about the paperwork this would require, and Sakura was fuming. Though it was then that he caught the faint sound of breathing as Sasu forced his head up with the Sharingan flickering. Sasu kun. You'll pay. Sakura drew a kunai and lunged at Taesun, who did a quick few hand signs. Wood release. Poison ivy sap wall. A wall of sappy plants, to be more specific poison ivy, rose from the ground and caught the annoying pink bug. She yelped. Get me off. Get me off. Get me off. A rock near them shattered from the intense volume. Taesun chuckled, and Kakashi was shocked. How did this guy get wood release, and does that mean Naruto does as well? Taesun forced himself back up, having a brief spasm due to the Chidori, before reactivating his storm blade and approached the prone form of Sasuke. 
Now, you have to die, and then I hope those two don't damage the fortress, it's a rental, but before he could kill the child a water jutsu flew straight at him, which he barely dodged due to his injury. The ground was now covered in sticky fluid. Water release. Syrup capture field. It was a team of Konoha Shinobi, Kitesu, Izumo and Hei Jeko, along with a fourth medical ninja he never got the name of before. Kakashi cursed to himself. He was too injured to speak, but now two Chun and Nena Tabekstu Jonin were about to potentially give the Ichiha more jutsu. Kakashi wouldn't feel worse if Guy beat him in a hairdo contest. You've asked for it. Wind release. Drilling air bullet. Inside the fortress. We now find the two decent genin of Team 7, Naruto and Haku, in a dark hallway. The two were looking around as if expecting problems and they were. Strange, no traps Naruto mumbled absently, before Haku sighed. Naruto had to be so cute and dense. Can't one be without the other? Please, don't jinx it Haku sighed behind him before she felt her foot sink. Of course, she had to set a trap as the floor suddenly rose up dramatically, straight towards the ceiling. Haku? Naruto yelled. Quickly, Haku jumped off the quickly rising floor seconds before it pounded into the ceiling. However, she fell. Straight onto Naruto. He yelped in surprise as Haku suddenly was crushing him. Worse yet, he was getting a face full of Haku's breasts. Well, at least they were only B cups, he wouldn't suffocate. Haku looked down at him in surprise. Naruto-kun, sorry I didn't mean to. She mumbled with a blush. She got off him as he scrambled back and blocked his face. Don't hurt me. Haku sighed, she wasn't surprised. The only females he really knew before her to any extent were A.M. and Sakura. While A.M. probably never gave him any reasons to cower like that, Sakura. Naruto, you know I'm not mad, it was an accident. Mentally she added that she would like to do it again, perhaps farther, but maybe after he was a year or two older, and they were chunin. Oh, sorry he chuckled as he slowly unshielded himself. With a blush, he tried to end the awkward moment. Um, well you have nicer boobs than Sakura does Haku chuckled. Naruto, Tora probably has better boobs than Pinky does. And the cat was male. With that, the two continued on their way to find Mr. Ostrich. Back to the fight. Storm release. Dual blade strike Katrina and Andrew. Dance of the Crescent Moon. With a cough, the two sword-based attacks collided as Taesun was sent rolling back. The coughing special Jonin landed next to his panting Chunin teammates. Panting, Taesun was running low on chakra, what even someone like him would be a little tired after fighting an air rank Jonin, three good genin, sadly arrogance, didn't take Sasuke's skill away, one of which was a Jinchuriki, one useless one, two Chunin and a special Jonin, with a major injury, unscathed. Not bad guys, this was entertaining. I'm afraid, however, that I must depart now he used the body flicker technique, wishing he had swift release. The two Chunin turned towards Kakashi. Who was that guy? Their medic nin healed Kakashi so he could speak, and with a cough deeper than hates I mean, that guy used storm and even wood release, that shouldn't be possible. His name is Taesun. I have no idea who he is or what he's doing. I can't help but wonder though. He dropped to the ground in exhaustion, despite the medical nin's chakra. Is he working with Orochimaru? That did make sense, Orochimaru was the one to graft wood release into Tenzo, so it wasn't a far stretch. But his concern now was Sasuke and whatever jutsu he got from the battle. Back inside the rented fortress, altar room. Well, this is, creepy Naruto commented, with a pale Haku nodding in agreement. The castle room they had entered was the basic idea of an evil scientist's lab, there was even a welcome mat saying lab sweet lab that they were standing on, and a creepy face on the wall, grinning like the Cheshire cat. Oddly, it resembled Naruto's nightcap. Okay, this guy's either an insane scientist or he has a sense of humor, Haku commented softly. Naruto then noticed the cage with Mr. Ostrich inside it. Oh, it's you. A voice said. Naruto jumped in fright, where did the voice come from? It was then the voice spoke up again, it was Mr. Ostrich. So, the humans have come for me, how quaint. Now, let me out of this cage. Haku gazed at Naruto in a confused manner. They never said he could talk. He shrugged. Well he never did talk before Haku, who had been gazing around the room, suddenly stopped dead in her tracks. Narutathus are summoning contracts. Half a dozen brown scrolls littered a nearby table. Naruto cocked his head in confusion. Summoning scrolls. Haku nodded as they walked over towards them and opened them. Each of the scrolls had a different animal on them, a penguin, a raccoon, a beetle, a cat, an ox and a squid. A fresh-looking one was next to them, this one with a fresh-looking ostrich on it. Each had several, rather faded names on them, except for the ostrich. Zabuza spent years trying to find one here I had an affinity with, with no luck. The one he did find, the cockroaches, it wasn't pleasant. 
you see, by signing the contract with your blood, you can summon the animal whose contract you have a contract with from a different plane of existence, or something, where animals can hold human levels of intelligence Naruto then recalled Kakashi's Ninkin. Like Kakashi's dogs. Haku nodded. Exactly. Though, this new one, there shouldn't be an ostrich summoning contract. So, is Taesun making new ones? Haku frowned. Perhaps, but to what purpose of, I don't know. It's very difficult to have more than one summonable species, the animals are picky that way it was then that Taesun appeared in a shimmer. Haku drew a handful of senbin as Naruto reached for a shuriken. Relax, I'm only a delayed clone, I have no battle abilities. I'm here to say, the ostrich shall be burned alive. Suddenly, a great fire burst forth, forming an impenetrable barrier of fire. This delayed technique. Armageddon blaze will burn your bird alive. He poofed out of existence. Water release. Water ball. A ball of water, like lightning ball, formed in Naruto's hands, and he sent the ball of liquid straight into the fire, succeeding in nothing. He looked around in desperation. Save me, I will not be served like a chicken. Mr. Ostrich cried out as flames slowly approached his cage. Naruto gained a serious gleam into his eyes as he turned towards Haku. Haku, what are the hand signs for a summoning jutsu? He demanded as he grabbed the new contract. Let's see, boar, dog, monkey, bird and ram, but why are you Naruto bit his thumb and quickly wrote his name down on the ostrich contract, barely legible, before doing the hand signs in a rapid and somewhat sloppy fashion. Summoning Jutsu. Mr. Ostrich. A burst of smoke ensured and as it cleared, Haku found Naruto sitting on the now safe ostrich, as if to ride the giant bird. Hey, what just happened? Mr. Ostrich said in confusion. Naruto chuckled. Adebayo. I am Naruto Uzumaki, future Hokage, and first ostrich summoner. Haku chuckled. Naruto-kun, never say that in public. Ostriches didn't exactly strike fear into anyone, though then again, Hanzo was feared for his salamander though at least, since this ostrich didn't live in its own realm, perhaps that meant he could still sign a regular contract. Well Haku-chan and my ostrich minion he was rapidly tossed off by said minion, who glared at him. Do not call me that, ninjin. Naruto was rapidly attacked by the beak of said ostrich until he managed to escape. Ouch, okay ostrich-sama, now let's get you out of here, but wait, we should probably take these other contracts. But Naruto-kun, remember what I said about. I know Haku-chan, but we might as well keep them away from Taesun. Whatever he's planning, the contract should be safe with Oji-san. Though the challenge would be to keep them away from the team and the Pomeranian Haku agreed. After all, Sasuke might not want the ostrich contract, but the thought of him summoning giant squid or tigers was alarming. But luckily, she noticed a sealing scroll lying around and quickly managed to seal the scrolls inside it. Naruto was amazed. Haku-chan, can you teach me how to do that? Haku smiled. It was then that Mr. Ostrich interrupted. Hey you two, if you'd stop preparing to make Naruto and Haku blushed in a combination of indignation and embarrassment. Can you get me out of here? And by the way, Naruto, be free to summon me anytime you want. It is always good to get away from the farm. Back in Konoha. But Sasuke, Sakura and Kakashi in the hospital for a few days, Sasuke and Kakashi for injuries and chakra exhaustion, and Sakura for severe allergic reactions. That left Haku and Naruto to deliver the report to the Sandame. He listened intently before speaking up as he removed his pipe. This is an interesting development. The stockpiling of contracts, while not unheard of, is unusual. Few shinobi can use more than one, and Taesun had six of them, and the ability to craft a seven for a totally new contract suggests something. What, Oji-san? He looked grave. Naruto, you know how you have the nine-tailed fox inside of you he already knew about Haku's knowledge of it from Zabuza well, the fox is the strongest of the tailed beasts, of which there are nine. Wait, there are more of them? Naruto said alarmed. The Hokage smiled. Sealed into others like you, in other villages, yes. They are the Achibi, Nibi, Sanbi, Yanbi, Gobi, Rakubi, Nanabi and Hachabi, and finally the Kaiubi. They are a raccoon, a cat, a turtle, a monkey, a dolphin horse. The what? No one really knows, a slug, a beetle, an ox-squid hybrid, and of course, the fox. Now, theory states that it is possible to summon a tailed beast with a contract of its type. For example, I have the monkey contract, and if I put enough time into it, I could possibly summon the yanbi, though I'd get its shinshuriki at the present time. The difficulty of that is why few have tried to summon a tailed beast with their contract, aside for the fact the creature would try to rip them apart if it was unsealed. Naruto looked alarmed. So, what, if someone had the fox contract, they could summon me. It's a mute point, the fox contract was destroyed long ago, its summoner unable to use it again. And there was only one summonable fox, the Kaiubi. There are many monkeys I could summon, many slugs Tsunade could call forth, many turtles Mido Guy could muster, but no fox summons. 
So, Taesun was after summoning their Jinchuriki. The Hokage blew into his pipe. Possibly, but seeing as there are no tailed penguins or ostriches, it is possible he was doing something else entirely. But let those thoughts rest, nothing can be obtained from worrying like this. All of you have received pay for this B-rank mission, and both of you may keep the contracts you found to your heart's content. But, don't try to sign all six of them, it's bound to end poorly. Add in the fact Ureya would kill the Hokage when he got back, before the Toads rioted and kidnapped Naruto. I will also keep this from the councils, and I recommend keeping that storage scroll with you at all times. The bank has a no-scroll policy, and it is possible that if the civilian or elder council hear of this, they will demand you hand them over to Sasuke for his use, all of them. Just in case, however, I grant you freedom from such an order. To make it official, he quickly wrote a law and signed it himself. I've already made a call for Tsum san and Hiashi san to sign this bill as well to help make the bill official. With no canine summons, Tsum would hold no interest in the contracts, especially the cat one, and the Hyuga don't perform jutsu outside of their clan, so Hiashi had no stake in the contracts. But what they missed was a young ninja outside the window listening into the meeting and dashing off. This ninja was civilian born. Akjutsu and Bio. Wood release, poison ivy sap wall. Begin. In the dark chamber room, Hamura's estate, several days later. Hamura, Kaharu and the civilians were fuming. Sasuke and Sakura were finally freed from hospitalization, but then one of their civilian shinobi informants told them that seven summoning contracts were retrieved on the mission, all in the hands of the ice slut and the fox boy. Sasuke and Sakura were seething in fury, and the council was tossing oil onto this fire. After all, how dare the demon and his ice slut take power that should be used by the Ichiha. Sadly, this has always been the case. The story of Sasuke Chiha and Sakura Hirono is a complicated one, or at least, Sasuke's is. Both were born into rich and influential families, the Ichiha were one of the most powerful clans in the world and in charge of the Kanoha police, while the Hirono were a merchant family of high regard. While on the Shinobi Council, the Ichiha were the most influential members. As a member of the Civilian Council, Sumsumshai Hirono was a loud activist for civilian rights and quickly gained support in the civilian and elder side. However, back in this time, the civilians had much less power because of the Ichiha. As the police of the village, the Ichiha knew the potential danger of many of the laws the civilians wanted to pass. For example, laws like no ninja may enter a civilian's property without permission, civilians are to have the right of way in the streets would easily impair ninja movement in a crisis, and the many anti-Naruto laws brought forth by Sumsumshai Hirono, such as laws against him using public restrooms, restaurants and entry into the academy itself, were negated because of the Ichiha. Yes, the Ichiha were actually major pro Naruto activists. Sasuke's mother, Mikoto, had actively encouraged Sasuke to try to befriend the young Naruto, back when Sasuke was a nice, well mannered kid. Fugaku personally jailed many attempted attackers and fined a dozen militia street vendors for unfair treatment, and Itachi was one of the Anbu the Sandane trusted to protect Naruto. Naruto never had any problems shopping in the Ichiha district, they almost treated him like Ichirakus did. This treatment was logical, really. The Ichiha, unlike the civilian council, knew about the nature of sealing and knew the boy was perfectly human. They also were militarily minded, for they knew the military potential of Naruto. They wanted to ensure Naruto's loyalty to the village. This was one of the reasons they planned a coup to overthrow the civilian council. Itachi, while all for the civilian council's demise, knew this plan could easily spell war, something the pacifist was against. That and his stronger loyalty was to the Hokage and the clan heads who would most likely be overthrown as well, spawned the Ichiha clan massacre, with manipulation from Madara, unknown to all but Itachi of course. This led to the civilian council gaining more power, with their greatest rival now under puppet control. As a minor and clan head by default, Sasuke's votes were in the elders' hands, allowing for more of their bills to be passed and fewer of the shinobi councils. Though they didn't get any chance to force punishment onto Naruto, as Itachi still cared about him and had threatened the elders who pushed him to slaughter his family, that if anything was to happen to Naruto or Sasuke, including death, banishment, castration or anything else of such nature, he'd reveal Kanoha's secrets to the other four great nations. Understandably, the council agreed. This was where the Sasuke problem began. Not only did his family's massacre traumatize him for life, but it also put him in the guardianship of anti-Naruto activists Hamura and Kaharu. They told him time and time again, he was not only supposed to despise Naruto for any reason he could, but also fueled his arrogance. He was decent for up to a year under them, still following his parents' examples, but then the fangirl base and the worship the civilian and Danzo excluded elder council gave him rotted him to the core. Similarly, Sakura was also spoiled by her mother and made to believe in anti-Naritoism. 
she remained a decent person, perhaps because of her friendship with Ino, until Sasu came into the picture, when things rotted in her soul as well. And they had reason to be arrogant. After all, Sakura was the most intelligent of the Kanoichi, while Sasuke was Rookie of the Year. However, book smarts only got you so far in the line of duty, so Sakura, while she could write strategies, didn't truly have the power to pull them off. Sasuke however was arrogant and skilled. Combined with his Sharingan, he was a walking time bomb. And that bomb was active. Hiruzen Sama has fallen under that damn brat's grip. He favors him over us, the council. He favors him above our hero, our hope for the future of Konoha, Ichiha Sama. And now that idiot of a Sandane thinks he can just write us off with a bill, eh? Well, let's see how those two can handle confrontation. Mark my words, the blonde terror and his ice whore will be beaten until they never rise against Ichiha Sama again. Sasuke smirked, with his pink lackey behind him. That dobe's going to get his ass given to him, and those contracts will be mine, for the Ichiha clan exclusively Kaharu gave it to the evil grin. And then, we're invoking the old clan restoration act. The old fool can't hope to argue against it unless he wants to be charged for treason against the village. With that act Sasuke any female who agrees or has reason to. Hamura chuckled. We'll be married to you to rebirth the Ichiha clan. And they had several targets. Haku for one, the ice release will make the Ichiha even more unstoppable than before. Then there's Anko Midarashi, the council have wanted her dealt with and she is a strong Kanoichi. Strong Kanoichi, strong children after all. Plans also called for forced agreements involving one or both of Hiyashi Hayuga's daughters and Ino Yamanaka, daughter of Inoichi Yamanaka, as well as Hana Inuzuka, Su Inuzuka's daughter, are also in the making, those old fools will have no choice but to vote with us unless they want to lose their daughters. Hell, we take them anyway after the big vote. Imagine it, a new Ichiha clan, with Sakura's brains, the Ai Sluts Kekai Genkai, Anko's strength, the Yamanaka Jutsu, the Inuzuka senses, and perhaps even a combination of both the Byakugan and the Sharingan. Sasuke was grinning evilly. Yes, I can see it now in myself as the Hokage and my brother dead. Sumsumshai Hirano then yelled loudly. But remember, my daughter only goes to you once you become a Chunin, that's the marriage law we passed for Shinobi.all in the hope that they'd be able to keep Naruto a Genin forever. Don't worry, all he has to do is get to the finals and we'll make him a Chunin, regardless of anything. He's definitely more deserving than the brat. Sadly, they didn't get a chance to call Naruto what they wanted. The Hokage's law was actually a large jutsu, use of a violating phrase would be detected by the sand aim immediately, and Anbu would swarm in here in seconds. But then again, in a few hours, the demon will get knocked around a lot by their champion. Anoha Streets, Ichiraku Raymond. One Mizo Raymond, with a pork Raymond on the side please. Oh, and a Mizo for Haku as well. Naruto ordered from his favorite, and truth be told, only Iteri, Ichiraku Raymond. The two chefs here, Tuchi and his daughter Am, smiled and warmly took Naruto's order. They both cared for him quite a lot, not only as a person, but as 50% of their annual income. In fact, Naruto paid for their TV, phone, internet and the rent on both their shop and their house each month. Gotcha, Naruto-kun. Am chuckled. Haku had an anime style vein on her forehead. She turned towards Naruto in a very slow, very creepy manner. Naruto-kun, he gulped. The eyes. She grinned and broke the creepy facade. It's nice to see you have people who care about you in the village. Haku had a sense of humor, living with Naruto you had to, and add in her training with Zabuza, and you have a potent combination. Of course, she wasn't living with Naruto the way she'd like to, not in the same bed. He slept on the couch, he insisted. Shivori, in small doses was always a fine trade in boyfriends after all. Here you go. The two were given their orders, and Tucci decided to have some fun. So, is this a date? He chuckled, to a fit of blushing. No, it's just we heard we might get another long distance mission, so I need to get a good meal in the both of us first. They both of them had packs for the trip as well, though it wasn't as if Naruto really had anything to bring, or worth anything for that matter, aside for his cloths, his night hat, wallet and ninja tools. Aku carried similar things, aside for the weird night hats and in addition, the ceiling scroll holding the contracts. But just as they finished off their ramen, a loud voice rang out behind them. Momoichi Haku, Yuzumaki Naruto. They turned around to find Sasuke and Sakura behind them, with smug grins, with the civilian council behind them, all with evil grins. Team, what's with the party here? Have to go and do a group duck emo ritual. Naruto smirked. Haku chuckled before the younger Haruno yelled out. Baka, be more respectful to Sasuke-kun. He is your superior. Lay off you transsexual Pomeranian Haku growled, we are all genin, our ranks are equal. I'm the head of the Achiha. And how many Achiha does that make? Face a team, you're no more a clan head than I am. Scrolls, what scrolls? 
technically, she was right, they only had one scroll that held the multiple scrolls. The summoning scrolls. Give them to Sasu-kun. No, even if we had them, no. Naruto smirked defiantly. The civilians on the council decided to chip their much over-speculated two cents into this fight. Ichiha-sama has the support of the council. And where is the shinobi council? Ah, they don't count. And the elders? Naruto was having fun tearing them apart. They are busy, correcting your teacher's mistake screams were flying through the air, and it sounded faintly like, my Icha Icha. Really, I'd think you council members would understand the rules. All three councils have to vote on an issue before such demands like yours are made. Tucci smirked. The council then turned on them. For that, Tucci Baka, that shack of yours is going to be closed down, with our authority. Yes, and might I add you can do that, because I am a civilian. But you can't order around shinobi like Naruto Kunner Haku-chan. Tucci said confidently. Naruto and the Sandane would keep his business afloat, and if not all their non-Naruto customers' funds went into his and AM's nest egg. They had enough to live well enough for at least a decade without working. The council was furious. That fool wasn't just going to be driven out of business, but into prison. As the last of the Achiha, I have the authority of the Kanoha police. Hand over the contracts, or you're going to be arrested, dope. Your idiot friend behind the bar there is already going to the big house for his insubordination. This was another reason why Himura and Kaharu took such interest in Sasuke and molded him into their puppet, he had control of the police by blood and its authority. Once he restarted the Achiha and got his blood in the officers, they'd be unopposed. However. Team, you're no police shinobi, your Achiha police force is long gone. Naruto smirked. That ticked off Sasuke for the last time. Oh, that's it you're getting it now, Sakura restrained the old man fire style. Phoenix age fire technique. Hundreds of small fire sparks flew straight at Naruto and Haku as his pink-haired minion went to capture the civilian. Ice release. Ice dome. A dome of ice formed around the two genin, blocking the fire jutsu. Water release. Water ball. A ball of water formed in Naruto's hand before he sent it straight at Sasuke. The ball hit him and sent him sprawling into the dirt. Pushing himself up, the council was yelling. You attack the last Ichiha, you're getting it now, boy. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto created a dozen shadow clones and charged at Sasuke. He glared bloody murder at them. Fang passing fang. Sasuke jumped into the air and began spinning, turning into a sharp vortex of claws. This vortex struck the clones, destroying them. And seeing this from the view of the Hokage's crystal ball was Tsuma Yuzuka, Shikaku Nara and the Sandame, who were furious. That, that piece of cat crap stole my clan jutsu. Tsum was fuming, you could almost see the steam coming out of her ears. Next to her, her large one-eyed canine companion Kurumaru was growling. Shikaku was annoyed as well. That troublesome boy must have been spying on your son's training and used his Sharingan. Sadly, there is no law to use on him. He stole hidden jutsu. Troublesome woman, but the fact remains there was never a law on it, it was more of a moral rule thing. And that boy has no morals. That was it for Tsum, as she burst through the window with Kurumaru close behind. Shikaku shook his head. I'd stop her, but it'd be too troublesome. I just hope Inoichi san can get Kakashi san out of his jam, erg, I'll go summon the rest, it's troublesome, but those three are going to get in trouble if they attack the Ichiha or the council for that matter. Agreed. The Hokage nodded. Tsuritobi sama, I believe another option may be necessary. These fights are growing too frequent. Danzo hobbled into the room via cane. Shikaku blinked. Wait, you're not assaulting Kakashi san. Danzo huffed. Shikaku-san, I don't care much for either him or our little whiskered friend, but the fact is, both of them are important assets to Kanoha's security, the one thing we agree on old friend. Saratobi blew into his pipe in agreement. Team 7 is falling apart. Ichiha and Haruno aren't compatible with Yuzumaki or Mamoichi, so I suggest we split the team up. Saratobi was surprised. Anzo-san, we don't have any spare genin, and genin teams may only go into the upcoming Chunin exams with three. The civilians and my old teammates will have a cow if Sasuke is bared, and I won't allow Naruto or Haku to be barred either. Danzo smiled. That's why I have a two-part plan, first Haruno and Ichiha are placed on a team with my young ward. He stood aside to allow a strange pale boy with a black midriff t-shirt, anbu pants and a creepy fake smile walked out and bowed. Sandame sama it is a pleasure to meet you. This is my ward, Sai. The Sandame eyed the child with dark curiosity. Strange, I have never met this one or seen him. He isn't a root. Okajama, I dissolved my group years ago. Danzo lied. And as for Yuzumaki and Haku. He stepped aside to allow another man to enter. He had a blue shirt, an armored right shoulder and white pants. He had brown hair and on his head was the high eight for Takigakur. Greetings, Hokage Dono. The Sandane was confused. Shibuki Dono? 
The man smiled. I have a recommendation to help you with your problem, my cousin Fu, Jinchuriki of the Nanavi. Lazistriker, nice additional comments to earlier debate, and it's nice to hear how you like my approach I'm taking with Fu and Danzo. Gumo and Kanoha remain tied in the poll. Oh, and I am not a Sasuk fanboy. Nor am I a fangirl. Life, and this chapter starts now. The Hokage's office. The Sandane blinked. Out of nowhere, the leader of perhaps the most paranoid of all ninja villages, offering up their own Jinchuriki and his cousin at that. The Sandame had been told for ages that anything too good to be true wasn't true. It did matter if it was him winning the Land of Earth's lottery or free Icha Icha for the next five volumes, these offers were always fake or had a catch to them. Shibuki Dono, may I ask, why are you offering to give up this Fu, your cousin and your village's Jinchuriki? I believe you are aware of our own Jinchuriki. Yes Naruto Uzumaki. Correct, and despite the wishes of the civilian council, I've tried to make his life as good as possible. Like, finding the most trustworthy banker to protect his account and trust funds from Jiraiya, as well as to guard his parents' old funds, and helping Naruto gain a rather decent apartment. Of course, it would be easier to just cut the civilian and elder councils off the equation, but it was an old law dating back to the days of the Shaddai that the civilians were to have a say in the village government. Of course, the only ones who got into power were the ones who wanted to control the ninja for their own agendas. Shibuki sighed, Sandame Dono, I wish this wasn't true, but compared to your Jinchuriki, Fu has lived a horrible life. Aside from me and my father, no one in the village cares about her. Everyone knows what she has sealed within her, unlike what you've done here, and can't look past it. My father, and later myself, had to privately tutor ourselves for her to even get the training of one of your academy students. She can't even go out for a walk without being verbally and even at times physically abused. Heck, probably the only reason she hasn't been raped is because the people are afraid she'd reproduce. He was shaking in anger. I just want to see her happy, and she won't be happy in Takigakur. The village leader should really hold his emotions in greater control. Danzo muttered. At the same time, we can use this as a show of trust, we show our trust to you by sending over the person who can potentially become Taki's greatest Kanoichi, and you can send something to us of equal value. Um, I can't ask you to take the Ichiha, can I? No. Oh, worth a try. The Sandame blew on his pipe. Speaking of, we need to figure out some sort of punishment that bypasses the laws of the civilian and elder councils as a way to punish that fool for his behavior. I believe both of us are in agreement that the Ichiha should not be made a chunin. Danzo commented. The Hokage nodded. Troublesome, I agree with that point. Shikaku shrugged. We could use that option. The Sandame was referring to making it public the Ichiha's plans and removing Itachi's missing nin status. While risky, this could make it so Itachi would be the new Ichiha head and the votes would be rebalanced again. That won't work, the troublesome council will twist that into their advantage. Shikaku sighed. For instance, they could say that the Ichiha were manipulated by residual demon energy or some other crap like that and deal away with Naruto. They were crafty that way. You could just give Naruto his house. Shibuki suggested. The Sandane thought about it for a minute before he turned toward Shikaku, who was grinning. Or, better yet, the entire Ichiha district. Back to the brawl, Kanoha streets. Sakura lay on the ground, Ichiha fans flying around her head. Tuchi, with a frying pan in hand, sighed. You know, I swear ninja standards are dropping daily. Am, back in the day, you could find academy students in their second year with better reaction time than this lump of pink mush. Sadly, only Tuchi was having any luck in the fight. As it was, while well, Sakura and Sasuk were both spoiled brats, Sasuke was a skilled spoiled brat, and his guardians the elder bats had found their way here as if they didn't have enough problems already. Ice release. Ice spikes. Haku sent spikes of sharp eye straight at Sasuke in an attempt to maim him. He laughed. High release. Dragon fire jutsu. A dragon made of flames was spewed out of Sasuke's mouth and quickly melted the ice before flying straight at Haku. Storm release. Great twister. Naruto jumped in between Haku and Sasuke, taking the blaze into the twister. Sasuke stared wide-eyed at the now flaming vortex. Storm release. Flaming twister. A flaming vortex slammed into Sasuke, sending him crashing to the ground. The council behind him began yelling insults. How dare you strike a clan heir. Freak. You should give those jutsu to Ichiha-sama. You are all idiots. Naruto yelled as the twister dissolved and he landed on the ground. Even if that so-called Sama of yours was any good, he can't copy any of mine or Haku's jutsu. The council just got angrier. Then change that. And why should we listen to you in bread fat bastards anyway? This shouting match continued until one of the dumber, fatter merchants yelled out. How dare you oppose our will you, you, Yadaman. Naruto's eyes twitched, as did Haku's, Tuchi's and AM's. 
While Sakura was out cold and couldn't hear that comment, Sasuke did. Huh, what's this about the dope and demons? The council member was about to answer that until he felt a sharp pain on his back and collapsed to the ground. Hidden Shadow Snake Hand. The man had been bitten in the back by a dozen poisonous snakes, which retreated into the arm of a rather ticked-off Kanoichi, with purple hair, blandish brown eyes, a brown overcoat and some sort of mesh suit. Sasuke for some reason shivered at the sight of her. Oh great, it's her. Hamura grumbled. It was Anko Mitarashi, the student of Orochimaru, known by many names, the Dango Serpent Mistress, the number one hyperactive knucklehead Kanoichi, and the Kanoichi most likely to kill someone with a glare. And she was not amused. Okay, what the hell is going on here? Breaking the laws, attacking civilians and ninja, looks like I have to drag you all to interrogation. Sasuke shivered, he didn't have fond memories of that place. Get out of here, Mitarashi. This is justice for our Ichihasama being denied scrolls that should be his. Kahara yelled. Sakura's mom decided to add. This is a civilian matter as well, so be gone snake whore. That ticked her off. Snakura summoning Jutsu. Anko, now seriously angry, summoned a giant black yellow striped snake the width of an average pickup truck. The council fled for their lives, pursued by the large snake. Anko laughed. Those idiots, it's just a harmless giant gardener snake. Well, that's them, now the Nichiha kun. He shivered at the tone, it was disturbing. Give me a reason why I shouldn't show you that trick of mine involving Fluffy the tabby and the stick of butter again. Once, Sasuke had been to interrogation and saw Anko at work there. Ever since, he was terrified of any of her overkill ways of torture. That particular torture was too horrible to think about. Because, I am rescuing powerful artifacts from an enemy Kanoichi and some sort of demon. Anko smiled evilly. Wrong answer kid fire release. Fire snakes. Anko breathed in deeply before unleashing two snakes made of fire straight as Sasuke. The snakes lunged. Water release. Syrup capture field. A wave of sticky water flew from Sasuke's mouth, trapping the fire snakes in some sort of glue. They cried out before smoking out. Damn. Anko growled before avoiding a drop kick from the bastard, before giving him a sidekick to find the boy flickering out. It was the basic clone jutsu. Thanks for the trick, by the way snake whore, fire release. Fire snakes. A single fire snake flew from Sasuke's mouth and struck Anko, knocking her into the sticky trap. This singed through her net clothing, luckily not anything major, but her stomach was no longer covered. Sasuke smirked, loving how this village had all sorts of strong and attractive kinoichi that would be used to revive his clan. Ice release. Ice spikes. Sasuke's gloating ended only seconds before he got impaled, the water from his own jutsu freezing into the attack. High release. Great fireball jutsu. Lightning release. Thunderball Jutsu. The two attacks from Naruto and Sasuke collided in the air, releasing an explosion. Sasuke was briefly distracted by the explosion before Naruto came up from behind him and gave him a kick to the ass. Sasuke flew into the air from the intensity before he turned around. High release. Phoenix Age Fire Technique. Dozens of small fires flew at Naruto from below. He was impaled before poofing. It was a shadow clone. Dope. I will have that Jutsu if nothing else. Um, don't think so, lightning release. 1000 years of pain. Sasuke suddenly felt violated as Naruto performed Kakashi's joke jutsu, but with a slight twist. An electric charge had been added. With a yelp that could scare a dragon, Sasuke was catapulted into the air and fell to the ground, twitching with electric chakra. Tuchi was laughing, as the poor boy was rubbing his ass and forcing himself up. Oh, you violated me. Hey, it's an actual technique in the data books, another patented Naruto jutsu. I'll sell scrolls of these, oh just imagine, that and ice release. Naruto, I am not. What, for all I know Tae soon and thus me might have it. Good point. Naruto laughed, before he found himself frozen, as did Haku. I, can't, move. Both his and Haku's shadows were connected to Sasuke's, who was up and grinning. Dobes, you can't hope to beat me. That Shitamaru may be a worthless ass, as is his entire clan, but this shadow possession is going to be fun. He activated a Chidori. Now, die Dobe. He ran at Naruto, charging the jutsu as both Haku and Naruto were forced to run towards him due to the shadow possession. Though before he could kill them with it, two things happened, first, he felt a sharp strike to his back, like some sort of reinforced poke. Second, something bit his leg. A snake. Sasuke's justice broke as he collapsed to the ground. Haku and Naruto sighed in relief. It was then they got a chance to see their saviors. One was obvious, the snake had come from the escaped Hanko. The other was a blue-haired, paled-eyed girl who was glaring at Sasuke with a look of fury that could give Ibiki chills. Anata-san. Naruto said shocked. She smiled nervously before poking her fingers together. Oh, hey Naruto-kun. 
Haku had seen this girl around before, almost stalking Naruto. And while it was nice to see that at least one girl in this town didn't worship Duckhead, having competition for her Naruto-kun was annoying. How dare you hit me with your filthy high uga hands and your disgusting snakes, you whores. You are impeding justice on the dope. All four of the figures still upturned and glared at him. Now, normally you could find mice that were more vicious than Hinata, being that she was probably the nicest and shyest of the Kanoichi. Arguably, she could probably get swamped with date requests if she didn't wear that jacket of hers. However, some things easily ticked her off. The first thing would be someone eating her cinnamon buns. Another would be asking if she was a boy. But the worst thing you could do near her was insult Naruto. After all, ever hear the saying, hell have no wrath like a woman scorned, and with Tsum on the scene now, growling, that made four scorned woman. So, you think you can steal hidden jutsu, eh shrimp? Tsum picked up the Achiha by the scruff and held him up to her eyesight. Sasuke then did perhaps the dumbest thing he could have possibly done. Put me down you imbred mutt. Don't you have a bitch to fuck or something? Apparently, Sasuke thought this was Kiba's dad. For that mistake, he was sent flying into a wall that promptly collapsed. The gathered females, meanwhile, cracked their knuckles. What happened next was a beating so terrifying, I can't describe it with words. Thus, Naruto decided he would never, ever, ever tick off a girl, ever. A day later, Hokage's office. But Sakura out with a concussion, and Sasuke still in the air of a civilian hospital, the only one that would take him, we find Naruto, Haku, Hinata, Hiyashi, Tsum, Shikaku, Anko and Tuchi in the office of the Hokage. Because of what had happened and the still annoyed council, Tsum had offered to let Naruto and Haku stay the night at her place. Terrified of upsetting her, they agreed. The old man blew on his pipe before beginning. This is a disaster. The entire town has divided, now everyone either hates you or worships the ground you walk on. The conspirators are in hiding, both the civilian and elder councils have been barred from gathering until a month after the upcoming Chunin exams, and while the law protects you from having to pay for the life you took, Anko-san, please don't do it again. I've gotten over a dozen letters demanding your removal just for that incident. The special Jonin grinned. Only 12. That's a little low. Tsum found herself respecting this woman even more. And while Kakashi is no longer being tortured, the poor guy is going to need some therapy to recover. Monies from both Kahara's and Hamura's estates have been moved to his account as damages. And now, for the Ichiha's punishment, which is the reason why I've called you all here. All the civilian and elder council think they have covered all their bases, such as his ninja rank, the Chunin exams and his Sharingan, I've managed to grab several mute points. First and foremost, the Ichiha funds in the bank are no more, all paid off as damages to the Nara, Inuzuka, Yuzumaki, and Mamoichi accounts as sizable amounts. The rest of it is being held in a new account in case he has stolen any other clan jutsu. Next, the assets of the Ichiha have been liquidated to you all, while the police powers are still with the civilians, their proxy vote control of the Ichiha seats have been removed and replaced with a seat for the head of the Hyuga branch family. Hiyashi nodded. While not gleaming with happiness, inside he was pleased. Now the branch family had a say in their fate in a way that the elders of his clan couldn't stop. After all, influencing a council vote by way of controlling seals was punishable by death. And the former Ichiha district is now in the possession of Naruto Uzumaki. This was the shocker, everyone looked at him in shock and surprise. What? Naruto-kun, most of Sasuke's aggressive actions has been against you and Haku-san, and because of a little law they placed, a shinobi from another village who hasn't been in Konoha for at least a year, can't own property. At the same time, the civilian council hates you, so this is the perfect way to tick them off. Yes that's true, but wait, what about Ichirakus? The Sandame sighed. Sadly, I'm unable to stop them from demolishing it, also. Oh yeah, Tuchi-sama, how'd you like to open Ichirakus in my new part of town? Tuchi was wide-eyed. Naruto-kun, you'd do that. How much? For free of course. Tuchi hugged the boy in glee. This boy could probably pay for all his expenses from his Raymond habits anyway. The Sandame smiled, only Naruto would be that generous. Wait, does that mean I'm Sasuke team's landlord? No, he's kicked out of his house, and well you were as well. The civilians foreclosed your place Naruto gulped. They did what? Haku was thankful they still had their stuff. But don't worry, we already are preparing a place for you three to stay. Now everyone was looking confused. 3. Why of course, your new teammate is going to live with you too. You are to escort Shibuki Dono, head of Takigakur, to meet her and bring her here, as part of your new team with her and Haku. Naruto had his mouth wide open, and Haku and Hinata were mentally thinking oh great, a new rival. Bach Techniques. Storm Release, Flaming Twister. Hekai Genkai, A. Description, the user uses Great Twister and absorbs a fire release technique, creating a firestorm. High release, fire snakes. Rank, B. 
Description, two snakes made of fire are spawned of fire and sent to the foe. Those who have seen Order of the Phoenix's duel between Voldemort and Dumbledore have an idea what this looks like. Lightning release, 1000 years of pain. Rank, C. Chapter 10. A Hero's Aura. And with that, the chapter begins once more. The faves and alert counts both stand at 121, and now they're tied, a different trend, yes. A new community, power hunger. You know, I want your opinion, should I try to make my own community or not? The poll was won by Kumo, so prepare to see a new poll that has great impact on the story, to a degree, 6 votes per person on the next poll. Review reply corner. HOODFOX3, you're fast, you know. And well, let me put it this way, you caught how the civilian council had the clan restoration act on use for Sasuke. Well, once Naruto's heritage is revealed. D-A-U-G-H-N-D-22, I doubt the civilian council are happy for your idea though. And thanks for the idea for using Anko. Scorpion King, both Haku and Naruto already have anti shuringan seals. Hopefully the seals should find their way around to other teams quick enough, but then you have guys like Gara who wouldn't have any warning, though at least his sand is safe. Cloudred, it was worse than hell, it was a group of scorned women. Leonius, that happened in the act of torture I couldn't write down, as well as the guys nuts having dog bite marks and several various snake poisons, and gentle fist hits to the nose to cause rapid bleeding. I don't know, you might be able to cut a tree with a makerel, a young tree perhaps. Oh, and Anko will not be with Naruto, in any scenario. Breed, we're C. Josh, he only gains Keke Genkai in life and death situations. Perhaps if Anko and Hinata hadn't stepped in, you might have seen another Keke Genkai. Don't worry, before Fu is in Kanoha Naruto will gain a new one. D-O-B-I-F-A-N 321, let's leave it like this, Sasuke is also growing more powerful, by some manner. R-A-W-66, again, if he does that, the civilian council can twist it. The fact is that they are masters of propaganda, they could easily reverse the situation. And to answer some obvious reviews, Shibuki in this timeline will have more backbone than his original counterpart originally did. Also, I thank Kanakin for this next Keke Genkai, thought it is slightly modified. Let's keep the story in forward motion. Anoha, training ground 3 the next day. A third training ground, where the failure of a team, the original Team 7, had their first test, a test which got our beloved orange-wearing ninja tied to a post. But instead of finding either Kakashi, who was currently getting therapy, Naruto, who had just left with Shibuki and Haku to find Fu, or the team of Sasuke, Sakura and Sai, as Sasuke was still in the air, Sakura was in hysterics after hearing what had happened to the Ichiha fortunes, and now the council was drawing up some sort of save the Ichiha fund, and Sai, no one had any idea where he was. Instead, this training ground found itself in the presence of the much more stable teammate, Hinata Hayuga, the tall, mysterious shade wearing Shino Aburam and the fur jacket, wild looking Kiba in Yuzuka, and his small white puppy Akimaru. They were waiting for their Jonin sensei, the strange dressing, odd eyed Karina Yuhi. Strange things are stirring, Shino commented to break the silence. Kiba smirked. Hell yeah, they are Shino san, and I failed to see the problem with any of them. Sasuke is dirt poor and in the hospital, we finally have enough money for a pool, and with Team 7 all messed up, I doubt we have to worry about them in the Chunin exams Hinata looked away, and Kiba quickly edited what he said. I mean, Sasuke team and Sakura-san are probably not going to be in the Chunin exams now most people would think that Kiba was a womanizer, based off his dog-like looks and behavior. That was far from the case. His mother was one of the most terrifying Kanoichi in the village, purpose the entire shinobi world. There's a reason his dad ran for the hills, and it may have involved a dress, a tomato and pack mentality. In addition, he was one of Naruto's old friends, dating back to before he even met Akimaru. Because of that, he was probably one of the reasons that Naruto didn't end up like the Jinchuriki of Suna, as in an insane bloodthirsty maniac, in addition to people like Aruka, the Sandium, Choji and Shikamaru. That, and he was one of the few people to ever see and survive against an enraged Hinata when Akimaru ate Hinata's last cinnamon bun. The poor puppy was nearly neutered before Hinata calmed down, apologized, and cried her eyes out. Oh, that's okay, Kiba said she smiled nervously, poking her fingers together. Kiba had a devious smirk. Well he knew quite well not to enrage Hinata, teasing her about her feelings, provided he didn't insult Naruto of course. So, I hear you have some competition, eh Hinata-chan she looked at him in surprise nervously I mean, I can tell you like Naruto-san, I can smell it dot, but the thing is, I can smell Haku-san has feelings for him just the same as you do, and knowing Naruto, I bet that the new teammate he's gone off to get will like him too, if she's female. Wonder if you'd be able to snag yourself your little crush Hinata was blushing. Kiba-san she was looking glum again. Kiba sighed. Hinata-chan, I was Kadingo that came out wrong. Obviously. Shino-san. 
if you're such an expert, you fix it. Shino just stared in his creepy fashion. Biba-san, I am not expert on females, unless they are insects. You got yourself into this mess, it's your job to fix it, Kiba glared, before trying a different approach. Anata-chan, the best way to make sure you get Naruto, just be yourself, talk to him and I guess if you beat Haku in the Chunin exams, that might help Hanada looked as though she was getting an idea. A rush of leaves then alerted them to the arrival of Kurinai. Kurinai sensei Hinata asked nervously. The Jinjutsu queen smiled. Yes, Hinata-chan. Um, well you know, how um, Naruto-kun, has those water release and lightning release, could you, um, teach me some of Fasa too? Meanwhile in Taki, Hero's water chamber. The hidden chamber of the hero's water, one of the world's most powerful substances. Taken from an ancient tree that dates back to before the time of the ninja villages once every 100 years, this water is enriched with chakra to a point a single sip can give the drinker the power equal to opening two chakra gates, the water is why Taki has never been invaded successfully. However, the water also cuts the user's lifespan by how much one drinks. A sip takes a year, a gulp takes five, and the entire container would kill anyone. This water was highly sought after, so defending it is Shibuki's most sacred duty. And with him gone, the duty was currently on another, his cousin Fu. Well, she wasn't told to defend it, but the minute Shibuki left, a few of the dumber shinobi tried to break in, so she was hiding out here. No one but Shibuki knew she had any idea where the water was, or where it was at all for that matter. Fu had tanned skin and mint green hair, with orange eyes. She wore a short white midriff shirt, with the bottom edged with fishnet armor. A Taki Hyate was on her arm, the opposite side Shikamaru wore it on, though to her the only reason she wore the thing was because she was loyal to Shibuki and not the dumb fucks in the village. Also on her arms were wide armlets. She was wearing a similar pair of shorts to her shirt, with a red cylinder container leaning up against the wall that belonged to her. As of now, she had her eyes closed, as if trying to take a break, when out of nowhere, loud splashes were heard, waking her up. Out of nowhere, three teenagers with ugly brown potato sack-like clothing and odd water, mask things on their mouths. Their headbands had the symbol of a megakur, the village hidden in the rain. Fu stood up immediately, glaring at the strange people. Who the hell are you clowns? Fu demanded. The fools glared at her. We are Team Aboro, give us the hero's water, and we allow you to live. Our god wishes to have it Fu grinned. The god? Really, do you actually believe in that trash? Trust me boys, if gods did exist, let's just say I wouldn't be this dump of a village's scapegoat. However, this hero's water is the property of Shibuki-sama, so buzz off before I stick those stupid respirators of yours up your asses. The ugly aim Jenin glared. I was hoping you'd say that, water style, water wyvern bullet. A small water dragon rose from the water port they had come from and flew straight at Fu, who grinned. You see, Jinchuriki abolites often were dependent on the tailed beast inside of them. For example, Rashi, the Jinchurki of the Yanbi, or Four-Tailed Monkey, gained lava release from his beast, Gara of the Desert, gained sand and wind abolites from the Ichibi, Shukaku, and Killer Bee gained the ability to spit out ink from the Hachibur, the giant ox squid thing. Whose beast was the Sanbi, the seven-tailed horned beetle. And while the beast wasn't a lava-launching monkey or a sand-controlling raccoon, it did have one thing. Massive strength. Who jumped Eno the air and smashed into the beast, causing it to disintegrate from the impact. The three range and in panicked. What is she, Sunate of the Sanin? One of them said in amazement before he felt a kick to the nuts that sent him flying into the wall. Water release, tornado of water. A maelstorm of water surrounded Fu that smashed into the second and third genin, knocking the three into the walls. In fear, the genin jumped into the water and swam away. She stretched her arms and sighed. That wasn't even a little bit entertaining. Kill them. Shut it you oversized bug the seal that Fu had, while nowhere as weak as Gara's, wasn't as powerful as Naruto's either. The seven tails could still speak to her, and it got really annoying. You're too soft. They attacked you, they die. So what, they attack the village, not my problem, more splashes were heard as Fu turned, and to her surprise, saw dozens of rain ninja emerge into the chamber. And leading them was a black-haired creepy man. Suyin san Ah, if it isn't the insect. Funny finding you here, planning on grabbing the hero's water yourself. Can't say I blame you, both you and I can agree this group of huts isn't worth much, though I can't understand why a freak like you would stay here. Fu growled. This is Shibuki-sama's home, and while I don't care a damned for the village, I'm not going to abandon him, Suya laughed. Oh, you care about Shibuki-kunai. The coward isn't good for anything except as a figurehead. Now hand over the hero's water, and when the villagers blame you for its theft, I'll give you a day's head start, Fu grinned evilly before closing her eyes. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not happening today. Suddenly, a red bubbling sound could be heard as a red aura surrounded Fu. It took the rough shape of a horn beetle, a giant horn of red chakra adorning Fu's head. 
One wing-like protrusion poked out of the chakra from her back. Opening her eyes, Fu's eyes were now golden yellow. Unlike Naruto, Fu had received some training in how to control her powers from Shibuki's dad. Because of it, she could control one tail of her full power and use it. What the hell is she? And then, all hell broke loose as he was smashed by an arm of painful red chakra. Meanwhile in the fox's seal. The fox sniffed the air and it picked up a familiar scent. The Nanbi's chakra. The oversized vixen smirked, it appeared the Nanbi had a host who'd use her power. Why didn't she have a Jinchuriki who'd use her power? Perhaps it was that additional seal. The seal, while holding from her host what the fox could smell ate more keke genkai for now, also seemed to be doing something else. The seal was slowly returning her yin chakra. The chakra that the yandium, who she had a picture of now alongside the shod eyes that she found, had sealed within himself. This was slowly increasing both her own and Naruto's power. The seal also was binding the traits to the boy's genetic structures. The traits could also be passed, should the boy ever get the brains to choose a mate. Wait, if the boy got married, did that make the Kayabi a lesbian? Erg, once she got out, she'd need to raise a small country. Whoever this Taesun was, he seemed to be a master of seals, and only one clan was that skilled with seals. The Yuzumaki. Taesun might be a remnant of the old clan. Back to actual reality. The traveling trio of Shibuki, Naruto and Haku, found themselves in a village under attack. Hundreds of Ain ninja were actively attacking. This was tentative of war. You guys, you need to protect the hero's water, go. Shibuki ordered. Naruto and Haku were aghast. But, these ninja are swarming all over the place, you guys are being overweeled. Shibuki sighed. The ninja attacking our aim ninja from the land of rain. As it is, it appears there will be war between aim and Taki. If you guys participate, that will only draw Kanoha into the war. I don't want to be known in history as the man who led to the fourth shinobi world war. Fu must be with the hero's water, it's hidden under the tree, go. The two genin begrudgingly ran for it. Shibuki glared at the invading aim ninja. Water release, water dragon bullet. A giant dragon made of water swamped the battlefield, blowing away several rain nin. So, this is the leader of this hut infested dump, eh? The commander turned to find that a hundred rain ninja had surrounded him. Where they all were coming from, Shibuki had no idea before he saw their commander. The commander had striking orange hair with ringed purple eyes and multiple body piercings. He wore a strange necklace that looked somehow familiar. It was the Diva Path of Pain. The aim ninja bowed before the being. Our god. Shibuki had a sweat drop. God. The figure fixed a look at Shibuki. I have come for your Jinchuriki and the hero's water. Give them up and we leave he was about to continue before a trashed fruit stand's apple suddenly rose up and split into pieces before flying at the diva path. With a strange jutsu, the apples were restrained and collapsed as if crushed. So, better than the apple shuriken, a eh, diva? Wind release, drilling air bullet. A harsh blast of wind flew from above and struck into the surrounding rain ninja, killing some while blowing the rest away. Jumping down following the air bullet was Taesun. Who are you and how did you get into this village? Shibuki demanded. Taesun smirked under his hotted disguise. The same as they did, you know you should improve your security, perhaps get yourselves a giant squid or sea serpent or something. These guys all have air apparatuses for breathing underwater and this guy doesn't even have to breath he glared at the diva path. But, seeing as though we both have a common foe in this guy's group, we might as well take care of him water release, water bullet. And so the battle began. Meanwhile on the lake. Haku and Naruto dashed towards the lake as a massive explosion flew from the lake. A girl with green hair and tan skin was blasted out from below before crashing and floating on the water, too exhausted to move. A man with spiky black hair and a blue aura rose up from the same place as well, with a jug of clear water in his hands. So, you little insect, that was pretty impressive of you. That power of yours is definitely something, taking out those rain ninja, but luckily the last one happened to have a chakra cancelling seal, no. Now without your bug's help, you're squashed. The man flew at the girl with an intent to kill, as the girl forced herself up as if to try to defend. Ice release, ice manacles. The man found himself restrained by ice. Fu stared in shock, why would these strangers help her? Lightning release, thunderball. Naruto formed a ball of lightning in his hands before sending it straight at the man who had just broke out of the cuffs. The attack sent him flying back as the two leaf genin ran to the down Jinchurki. You okay? Naruto asked before the girl forced herself up before collapsing back down. She cursed, that seal may have been removed, but her chakra was still destabilized. However. I'm fine she obviously lied with a tone colder than Haku's ice release. Though, from what Shibuki had said, that was kind of expected. The man however wasn't done. So, helping the little monster, eh? Well, prepare to find out what happens to demon lovers. 
to Kigaku's secret water release, Water Sword. A sword of water formed in the man's hand as he flew at terrifying speeds. Oh no you don't, water release, great breakthrough. Ice release. Senban shower. A giant wave and hundreds of ice needles flew straight at the man, who broke through them like they were nothing. What? Injutsu, paralysis. Haku and Naruto yelped as they lost feeling in their limbs. Die. He flew and swiped his sword in aim at the still defenseless Fu. She stared in horror, like a deer in headlights, waiting for the blow that never came. Because Naruto had forced himself in the way of the attack, overpowering the Jinjutsu, but now having a water sword sticking out of his gut. Naruto-kun. Haku gasped. Fu was stunned. This complete stranger took a mortal blow for her. Humped, kid that was stupid. But be glad to say you died today by the hand of the mighty Suyan. The man laughed until he noticed that Naruto was glowing orange. He was shocked, as was Fu. He's just like me. That chakra, it's. The Kayabi. While inside the seal, another of the links on the seal glowed before revealing a new kanji, aura. While outside, the wound was healing, while a ball of blue chakra was forming in Naruto's hand, a mixture of the spiritual yin chakra Taesun's seal had been slowly returning, and the yang chakra of the nine-tailed fox. The ball slowly turned into a full blue sphere. What sort of jutsu? Or a release, or a sphere. Naruto sent the blue ball of chakra flying at Suyan, who was sent flying across the link, skipping on it like a tossed stone, before he stabilized. You, demon brats. Fu, Haku and Naruto forced themselves up to prepare for battle. Bak ninja techniques. Water style, water wyvern bullet. Rank, B. Description, a weaker version of the water dragon bullet. Or release, or a sphere. Heke Genkai, A. Chapter 11. A new team dawns. Okay, time to continue, but has anyone else noticed that on occasion the hit counters freeze up? Well, they seem to be frozen at the moment, so I can't give an accurate view of the current hit count. However, we have 127 faves and 126 alerts, and a new community, my new community, Naruto proper rewrites. I am accepting staff requests. To review replying to reviews that I can comment or elaborate towards. RAW 666, Taesun, did give Naruto the Keke Genkai for that reason, and others. But as the saying goes, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, and him meeting Fu and saving Haku alters his plans, but for better. Note, Taesun is not a self-insert, he's a character who plays the story from both the front and behind the scenes, testing Naruto and making him stronger. Her pain Rikaudu, Naruto plus Fu plus Haku equals real Kikis team. Good Fox 3, both. Narajiro, do you say the same thing in every review? S-C-O-R-P-I-O-N-K-I-N-G-12, um, note Sunate in the complicated love issues, at Alsha's over 50 years old. Though her having kids isn't totally out of the question. Contracted Laos, yes. And to the new poll, Naruto leads with 9 votes, Fu, Haku and Samui follow with 8, then Shikamaru and Gara with 5, Tamari at 4, Lee and Korotsuchi with, Hinata, Tenten and Kari with 2, and Ino with 1. The rest are all goose eggs, zeros. This chapters hits the floor and begins now. You fools think you're a match for me. I have the hero's water, I am invincible. Suyan flew at the genin with amazing speed. Ice release, protective ice dome. Haku formed a dome of ice around the team, which Suyan collided into. The impact shook the lake shore, sending ripples cascading from the impact zone. The ice was caked in cracks, but Suyan had been forced back. Haku panted, that took a lot of chakra to hold. Or a release, or a sphere. Naruto charged up another sphere of powerful chakra before sending it straight at Suyan. His aura flared up as the attack was held back by the chakra shroud. With a roar, Suyan jumped into the sky, flying the brats with an intent to destry. Water release, water dragon bullet. A water dragon roared up from the lake and flew straight at the three genin. The blast impacted them, sending them skipping across the lake shore until they exploded into smoke. Shadow clones. Suyin gasped before getting smacked harshly from behind by an enraged Fu, before crashing into the lake, the hero's water jug falling into the hands of Naruto and Haku. Fu landed next to them with a grin. Hey, that was actually good teamwork Naruto and Haku grinned. I think this is a start to a great partnership, A. Eh, however, in a surge of chakra Suyin forced himself back up from below the water's surface. I am not done with you fools yet. Naruto did a few rapid hand signs. Summoning Jutsu. In a flash of smoke Mr. Ostrich appeared. Oddly, he was standing on the water, like a ninja. You little human, why do you summon me all the way out here? The bird demanded. Fu seemed confused by the talking ostrich. Naruto gave Mr. Ostrich the hero's water. I need you to take this water and get to safety, Mr. Ostrich glared. A game of hide and go seek, eh hey boy? Well, it's either this or I get more ribbons on my neck, so shadow clone jutsu. 
A dozen ostriches formed next to the original before scattering. All the ninja here seemed disturbed. Did he just? I think he did. That is one strong bird Suyin thought I should capture it, the ice girl, and these Yinchurki. I bet I could find a good price for them. Water release. Water tornado. Storm release, great twister. Naruto and Suyin collided with both of their tornado-like jutsu. Meanwhile. Most of the aim shinobi had fled, as the diva path continued its fight against Taesun and Shubiki. The problem with the paths, other than their obsessive amounts of piercings, creepy eyes and the amount of chakra they require from their controller, is the fact that they work the best as a full team. It appeared as though only the diva path was present here, as if their master didn't expect too much resistance. That was a mistake. Normally, the Adatsuki work in partners, but oddly the partner of the diva's path controller, Conan, wasn't present. Perhaps she was back in aim, or again Taki might have been underestimated. Or perhaps, it wasn't Taki that they underestimated, but the unexpected arrival of Taesun. Shinra Tenshi. A orb of gravity stopped a fire bullet and water dragon jutsu straight from Taesun and Shibuki, from striking the path of pain, though the path seemed to be quickly weakening. That thing, is unreal Shibuki panted, running low on chakra. Taesun was faring better. Hard to believe there are six of them. Let's be glad only one appears to be here. Six of them. Who are you, and how do you know this? The diva path demanded. Taesun smirked. I am Taesun Yuzumaki, the wanderer, the remnant, the seal sage, the scroll master. As to how I know about your tricks, Nagato, wielder of the Rinnegan, descendant of the same clan as myself and our lovely blonde haired Jinchurki friend, that is for me to know and you to find out. Wind release, violent wave palm. Wind release. Hurricane gust. The two wind releases collided, releasing a massive explosion that flattened a few nearby huts. The diva path used the explosion to get behind Shibuki, who turned around rapidly. High release, dragon flame jutsu. Water release, weight dragon bullet. The two elemental dragons collided, but the fire dragon somehow overwhelmed the water one and crashed into Shibuki, who was sent flying into a stall of fish and fell out conscious. Taesun smiled. Truly amazing, that much chakra force in a jutsu. Makes me wish I had the Rinnegan, what Naruto could do with it, lightning release, wave palm. A lightning version of Beast Wave Palm flew from Taesun's hand towards the path. High release, great fireball technique. The two techniques collided with a vengeance. Diva and Taesun gave one another a stare down. You're good, Taesun Yuzumaki. Do you wish? Um, no, I'm not joining your little cult. I have issues, serious issues, with the whole merging Jinchurki concept, and I don't trust two certain members of your group especially. Diva glared. Why do you fight us then? We will bring peace by pain. You caught the pain part, right? The fact is, I believe there is another way to bring forth peace, and I've already made the first plays on that notion. Naruto-kun, she'll be the one to bring peace and revive our clan, Diva looked confused. Why not yourself? The truth of the matter is there are reasons I can't. Moral for one thing, and at the same time, or release, or a sphere. A blast of aura was sent at the path. Shinra Teshi. A orb of gravity blocked the sphere before it was sent back, and with it destroyed a cabbage cart. Is that I can't pass tricks like that, but with my seal, Naruto-kun can. He, unlike me, needs that power to do what must be done. I see. So, you stand in our way. Well, Taesun Yuzumaki, you shall meet your end by the hands of the six paths of pain. Until next time. The path teleported away. Taesun had an I'm sweat drop. Cliche much. He turned around to observe the battle with Suyin. He smiled. Show me your power, Naruto-kun, Haku-chan, Fu-chan. B.S. Suyin. Water release, explosion. Air exploded from under Suyin, sending him into the air. This guy just wouldn't give up, it was infuriating. Lightning release, thunderball. Naruto sent a ball of electricity flying at Suyin, who used his aura to reflect it once more, before he was forced to reflect a dozen shuriken from Fu. Water release, wave impact. Suyin crashed down onto the water's surface, sending hundreds of waves streaming towards Fu, Haku and Naruto. The genin jumped out of the way to avoid the impact, before they got their chance, the aura around Suyin was starting to fade. Wind release. Frost wind. From Haku's mouth a frigid wind filled with ice crystals was blown toward Suyin with high speed. Aura release, aura sphere the blue sphere was tossed into the attack as well. Fu tossed a group of shurikens into the mixture, before letting out. Shadow shuriken jutsu. The shuriken mutlaplied into thousands that surrounded and impacted into Suyin, as the other attacks hit, sending him spiraling to the lake. We did it. Naruto cheered as the trio landed on the water's surface, before his eyes widened, as did Fu's and Haku's. Suyin dissolved down into water, it was a water clone. Good, but not good enough, water prison jutsu. With a yelp, the trio were trapped in a water sphere. Suyin was grinning evilly. 
So it ends, you fraud well, but prepare to die. He smirked, as did Haku, before she dissolved into water. Suyin was shocked. The water clone. Naruto and Fu were grinning now. Ice release, demonic ice mirrors. Two mirrors of ice formed around Suyin, Haku didn't have enough chakra left to use any more of it. As reflections of her appeared in both, Suyin was flabbergasted. How are you doing that? Ice release, Senbin shower. Hundreds of ice Senbin flew from Haku's mirrors as she teleported rapidly, impaling themselves into Suyin, breaking his control of the water prison, allowing Fu and Naruto to escape, and with a breath of air they were revigorated. Let's end this, shadow clone jutsu. Naruto created five shadow clones, before nodding towards Fu. She got the message, and jumped into the air. What the? One. The original Naruto kicked Suyin into the air. Two. A shadow clone headbutted him farther. Three. Another gave him a harsh blow to the stomach. Four. Five. Two combined themselves for extreme punch. Six. The last of the clones held onto Suyin's limbs now Fusan. Seven. Fu gave Suyin the mother of all drop kicks, sending him crashing towards the water at mad speed. Now Haku. Gotcha. Haku cancelled the mirrors before using ice release to freeze the surface of the lake into a solid ice block. Suyin and the shadow clone holding him collided into the thick ice, the shadow clone exploded into smoke while Suyin went limp. Haku collapsed to the water, her chakra was almost gone, and even Fu and Naruto felt drained, but they did it. With Naruto holding her up, they limped back to shore. On the shore, Taesun was smiling. Well done. Time skip. Hey, what are you doing here? Naruto demanded. Taesun just shrugged. Shibuki was back up and running, though he was unhappy. Because villagers had caught wind of the fact that the diva path had came for their Jinchurki, they had unamiously voted for her banishment, though Shibuki was able to redefine it into a transfer to Konoha in exchange for funds to help rebuild. Funds from the former Ichiha accounts for sure. Now that the hero's water was safe once again, plans were being made for its increased protection. Hey, I saved Shibuki Dono's life, lay off me would ya? He did fool was smiling. Thank you, Taesun san for protecting my cousin. I am in your debt Naruto and Haku gave her a look. Fusan, this guy is a missing nin who attacked us for no reason. To give you the keke genkai, remember. Stole Mr. Ostrich. I was testing you. Caused the team to gain the all those jutsu from the chunin, as well as the chidori no Taesun was looking abashed. Hey, that was a mistake, I admit that. What, I'm not perfect. Okay then, what do you want anyway? Taesun chuckled. To stop him. Who? Who him? Taesun reached for a storage scroll in his pocket. You find out in time. But, Shibuki Dono, you really need to improve your water side security, might I suggest he began pulling out more summoning scrolls from his ceiling scroll. More of them? Haku said shocked. Taesun smiled. You could say I'm a collector of ancient lost summoning scrolls and a creator of new ones. Let's see, Chinchilla, no, he tossed the scroll, with a glance, into Naruto's confused hands Gibbon, no another scroll rabbit, nah the scroll landed upright, spun, and then collapsed neatly squirrel it's just nuts, the pun came with another tossed scroll flamingo possibly he gave a look towards the lake no. That wouldn't do, I know I have something workable in here he tossed the scroll to Naruto again. Hey, what's with? Roadrunner, no another tossed scroll to the Jinchiriki prayer dog this one landed a perfect 10 mackerel might be good for cutting a tree, but their salt would turso more for Naruto Dodana, do I have to say it hm, Loch Ness Monster, um Shibuki, you guys do a lot of fishing, right? Shibuki looked a little baffled, in fact they all were. Um, yes. Um, then that wouldn't do another scroll was given to Naruto now then a beaver that should do it, he tossed the scroll at the confused village leader. Nature's builders, I'm sure their work wonders here Shibuki looked at the scroll like it was sacred treasure. And you're just giving me this. Taesun chuckled. Of course, I have a lot of them, and one man can't use a thousand contracts, so why not give some out oh Naruto you can keep those he looked shocked. Huh? You're just giving me. Quite so. You see, I have reason to see the Yuzumaki revived to their former glory. And artifacts like that are perfect for showing a strong clan. The Saratobi are famous for their monkey summons, the Sabaku clan of Suna are infamous for their weasel summon, and I can see you having quite a few children, so a few contracts to go around doesn't hurt, no. Oh, well I'm at it he tossed Naruto one more contract have a Tuatara contract. The Tuata. Taesun chuckled before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. The nearby ninja sweat dropped. What an odd fellow Shibuki commented but at least he seems to be on our side. You'd best be on your way home, to Fuchan's new home that is he smiled. Fu had tears in her eyes. I, Shibuki san Shibuku smiled sadly. Don't worry, you'll be able to see me again one day and I'm sure Naruto kun will make you happy, Naruto blushed as Haku fumed. Fu had a evil grin before grabbing Naruto's arm. 
Of course he will, after all, Naruto-kun's mind Naruto seemed surprised, and Haku was fuming. Kun? Haku grabbed his other arm. No way, Naruto-kun's mine. 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 Shibuki laughed at Naruto's curse slash good fortune. Depending on how you looked at it. Meanwhile in Konoha. From out of nowhere, a bright light filled a isolated clearing in the forest. The light was coursing with colors, green, blue and reds. In Kumo. Listen up brokage, I can see the music of Chunin in my students, and I'm wanting to see them promoted. But the exams ain't fallen here for a year, but now they're falling in Kanoha, so I was wandering to a massively tall and muscled man, one with seven swords on his back, shades and a tattoo of a bullhorn on his face, the other in robes like the Hokage, but yellow instead of red with a different kanji. We're in a meeting. The other man sighed. B, you know quite well that we don't have the best relations with Kanoha. The Hyuga alone would be ferocious with them. Don't sweat it bro, the bee got it covered the rakage side. That's why I'm sweating. Okay, what if I send someone else with them Yujito chan perhaps? But bro, what's the worst that could happen? The cage glared at his brother, the Hachabi Jinchiriki. Do I even have to answer that? And Suna. The boy with red hair and a strange gourd on his back was staring up at the moon from up top a building. The black rings around his eyes and his glare made him appear like the manifestation of terror. Soon, mother, I will give you tasty foreign blood. Doc techniques and what they do. Lightning release, wave palm. Rank B. Description, a electric version of Beast Wave Palm. Water release, wave impact. Rank B. Description, you smash into a body of water, sending harsh ripples of liquid cascading towards your opponent. Wind release, frost wind. Rank C. Description, a barrage of frosty wind is blown straight towards the foe. Formation, Fuku 2. No rank. What if God like Naruto Sasuke can civilian council bashing, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.